No, thank you for being here. I really, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm, thank a, you. I'm a big fan. Um, I want to start with a difficult question, really. When last did you see your wife and your kids? Uh, it will be July 2019. That was when I bid them um, goodbye to, on my way to Nigeria. For that was, um, I visited the U.S. Mm. after the election mm. in February. And I came back shortly after that. Yeah. And then I went back. And this was uh, in July. I came back again for... And that's the final time I saw them before I went to the airport. So that's like three years ago? Probably more than three yeah, years. Yeah. Huh? Yes. The reason I ask is because I think that was last week or last two weeks I saw on your Instagram account an emotional video you put out. Yes. You know, I, I can't imagine how, how difficult it is, you know, not to see your family, your wife, your kids. And I think you, you said the DSS has your passport as well. Yes, I've been... Um, after my arrest... Uh, in August, uh, when they took me to court, mm. and a judge gave an order that my passport should be deposited with the court registry. Okay, um, all based on false allegations. Yeah, and the judge also restricted me to Nigeria, mm. and I spent, I mean, restricted me to Abuja. Yes, and I spent almost uh, some three years restricted to Abuja, mm. unable to travel out of Abuja, and. We went to court, the court of appeal, to ask them to set aside all these yes. very draconian uh, conditions, mm. uh, bail conditions, and the court of appeal didn't find it wise to release my passport. So I was only granted that right to travel out of Abuja, not to leave Nigeria. So they are still in possession of my expired passport. <laughs> So, what's, I mean, I, I, I imagine, I know that obviously the federal government has their reasons, right? Like, I, I believe they see you as a threat. But coming back to the issue of family and trying to relate it to my second question, which goes to the issue of, you know, the locality of, of not just politics, but also life in general. You know, the, the, first, the first step begins from the family. That's right. That local nature, right? And one of the things I've tried to to square with you is, I keep on asking myself, someone of your talent, someone that has the amount of ideas you have, great ideas, if I may say, won't, won't a run for governor of Ondo State be, be a best bet for you, right? Because you have all these ideas that they've not, been, they've not really been tested or tried before in Nigeria. Won't understood be like a liquid test for these ideas. So for example, you would say you've been governor of Ondo State for eight years, you've tried these ideas, you know what works, you know what does not work. Then when you're going for presidency, you can be like, look at what we did not look at what happened in Ondo State for eight years. Look at how we transformed Ondo State. We can replicate those same ideas, those same actions to the whole of Nigeria. But what would you say? Like why why not begin at that local level? That's not the nature of uh, big ideas. Mm. Big ideas are, you know, a set of issues. It's set like you know, a set of very powerful elements yeah. of the human thought that require space, time, mm. uh, and they're not limited to any particular geography. Yeah. If you limit it to a geography, you kill the idea, mm. because ideas are uh, espoused in time and space. Yeah. And um, if I would stayed in Ondo State as a governor, and the president of Nigeria is an idiot, mm. he will kill your idea of trying to develop Ondo State mm. or trying to, you know, create an imaginary Ondo State that's better than Nigeria. Yeah. Let's even assume that they don't kill it. And you have an understood that it's a Christmas tree at night. Mm. The rest of Nigeria will kill the Christmas. They'll come and take away the Christmas trees because then yeah. this bright idea is so you know is surrounded by energy sucking negative ideas yeah. that says you can, you know a good idea cannot exist in isolation. It has to be surrounded by other positive ideas mm. so that these ideas themselves can thrive. That's number one. The second aspect of it is that there is no law, uh, either natural or uh, man-made, that yeah. says an idea must be limited to any particular space. Yeah. 
the third aspect of this uh my reputation of staying in a small place mm. is that my own kind of ideas are not the ones that needs to be tested in, a, in any particular space i'm not trying to experiment yeah. these ideas are ideas that i know could make things work mm. and i can make nigeria nation a great nation yeah. that is why those other candidates that you see who have governed for eight years, certain government spaces yeah. cannot are struggling to defend their own records. I don't have to yeah. because I know my ideas can work. My ideas have been tested theoretically. They've been tested practically everywhere. And I'm only saying I should be invited here. And I've tested them in my own life, I, you know, by way of travel, by way of understanding of the world, by way of teaching. So ideas are not limited to people driving around in a convoy of cars. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, what do I call it? Uh, claiming that they have changed the world or changed the environment when mm. nothing has happened in those places. So I took time to explain this to you so that you can just completely forget about yeah, you just, this yeah. governed limited space idea of testing ideas. And some of the greatest mm. leaders in the world in history they didn't have to go to a local government or a state government to make them work. They govern nations. And these nations are a living testimony to what big ideas and powerful ideas can do. People who invented stuff uh, like aeroplane, you know, who invented the television. They didn't invent them so that they could only wash it within their own family set yeah, to yeah. record their tested. And then they said, okay, yes, now that it's worked in my family, uh, let's ship it to another family. They, they, they brought the idea together. They produced something out of it. And it went out all at once and the world embraced it. That's, mm. the, that's the nature and power of ideas. But the moment you limit an idea uh, to one sect or one section or one sector or its particular space then it is no longer an idea i think it's not just the issue of limiting the ideas ideas i think it's also the issue of the fact that every politics is local right yeah so for example i mean you've been in the you've been in, you've been in the u.s yes. i've also been to the uk in the uk for example you have local councils yes the importance of those local councils cannot be overstressed. That's right. So, for example, the local council is involved in healthcare. The local council is involved in social services, taking out your trash from your house, the school your kids go to. That's the job of the local council. Yes. So, I'm not even saying that you should go and become local government chairman. It, it doesn't I think matter. That's, I think that's beneath you. Yeah. However, for the state governor of on those states, where you can make massive. But on those states, yeah. governorship is also beneath me. Do you know why I want to yeah. tell you? Yeah. I had an idea mm. um, in 2018, yes. and it had to do with the controversial idea mm. of Ondo State uh, developing the cannabis industry. Okay. And the governor of Ondo State got the idea from me mm. and went to Malaysia mm. to find out how to refine cannabis yes. and wanted to bring a cannabis refinery to under state. Yes. But that was months after I had spoken about the idea. It turns out he's never heard about the idea before. <laughs> so it was he heard it from me first, yeah. but in order to cover it up yeah. that this is from Shore, he then traveled to another part of the world. Mm. You know, but here is why ideas are very important that they are tested within space. Is that when he got to a point he was stuck with the idea because the national government already said she can't do this. Mm. You can't generate revenue from cannabis. It's an yeah. illegal substance drug. If he was president, he wouldn't have that encumbrance. Yes. That's why people with big ideas don't limit themselves to okay. small spaces. Yeah, let me take it to an example. You can't yeah. have a small mind yes. and that can power a big idea. Yeah. So a lot of yeah. people who are running Nigeria are small-minded people. Yes. I don't have a small mind. I agree. And yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> too, I, but but let, me, let me take you back to an interview you, you did. And you made mention of the fact that, so for example, federal minimum wage, right? Yes. You yourself acknowledge the fact that a federal minimum wage will only apply to federal workers. And I remember in that interview, you said that it would be up to the state governors to implement a minimum wage in their states. Yeah. 
So let's say, for example, going back, because I want to, I really want to extensively discuss this issue with you because I believe that a bottom approach is better than a top down approach to solving mm. Nigeria's issues, right? Yeah. So let's say, for example, you, you were a governor of Ondo states, introduce a minimum wage in Ondo states. For example, I think your example you gave was 100,000 naira per month, yes. right? Not for Ondo state, nationally. Yes, nationally, but let's not. And that is, it. for me now, that has been overtaken of, of, by obviously, uh, you know, events. inflation and everything, yes. So let's say, for example, on those states, Governor Sowore, you implement 200,000 naira per, per month for everybody in those states that is working, that's eligible to work. Yes. That alone is a massive difference. The federal government, I do acknowledge in that yeah, interview, yeah. will not be able to. In that, do you know how many workers there are in those states? How many? Well, I, I don't know. Okay. But let's say that maybe there are 3,000. Yes. Oh, let's say 5,000. Mm. Implementing a minimum wage of 200,000 applied to 5,000 mm. state workers is not even a drop in a bucket. Mm. That is why ideas need to move to powerful and big spaces yeah. for implementation. Yeah. So it will not have any impact on Nigerians. Yeah. I'm trying to change Nigeria. I'm not trying to change a section of Nigeria. Mm, mm. That's my focus. You must also understand where my ideas are coming from and where they are focused. You know, I have a laser beam, mm. you know, on Nigeria. If you now ask me to point a laser beam to a section of Nigeria, you have ruined the idea ab initio. Yeah. That's from the beginning. You have destroyed your idea because of your inability to understand how ideas work and how they yeah. change society. And that's where I'm coming from. Like, when I was growing up, my father was a teacher. You know, because I was living in a village, yeah. my entire goal in life was to become a principal. To me, I was like, well, you know, that would be an added, you know, uh, opportunity for me. So why was my idea limited to becoming a principal? Mm. Because of my worldview, you know, my space. My yeah. space was a village setting. And it could not, my, my brain could not accommodate anything bigger than a teacher's son who becomes a principal, you know, which should be big deal by virtue of my own village environment yeah. where I grew up. But by the time I got to the university, the idea had been thrown out of the window even before my first one week as a freshman, mm. right? Reason was that I was no longer in Ondo State. I was now in Lagos. <clears throat> and my idea, my mindset changed because I found myself in a different space. Yeah. You understand? By the time I was done at the University of Lagos, I just wanted to be a government worker. I wanted to be a town planner, you know, yeah. uh, in a town council. It's just planned a small space. I was thinking about, oh, maybe I could work at the Lagos um, town planning units. You yeah. know, that was as of my second year. That was what I was looking at. By, by the fourth year, yeah. that idea also had gone out of the window because I had been attacked by situational variables. Yeah. I was not looking at becoming, you know, a world citizen, a global citizen. Yeah. You know, being a global citizen was my idea by the year 1999 when I was leaving Nigeria to go to the U.S. I got to the U.S., my environment, my circumstances, my life had changed. You know, when I finished at the U.S. with a master's degree in public admin, I was thinking about working at the New York, New Jersey um, uh, Transport Authority space, mm. right? By the time I was done with school, internet had come. September 11 had changed the world. So I had a different worldview. I didn't want to work anymore, nine to five. What did I do? I went and created an internet space, website, news website, that also exploded and advanced my, uh, my idea of what news reporting should be yeah. and how I could through an African reporting platform become a global brand. And I achieved that. So I have just given you a number of examples that has shaped my life. And what shaped my life on the other end are the ideas of people who don't think small. Mm. That's how I got here. So to live on those states, travel to America and 30 other countries, and then come back to be thinking on those states, it means that uh, I haven't achieved much yeah. in terms of expansion of, yeah. 
you know, what the human brain is capable mm. of doing. To be thinking about a million people, when I have 200 million people that my ideas can take care of, can take them out of poverty, can put them in the job market, can make them have fundamental, solid healthcare system, that can make them, you know, grow fast, and then stick all my ideas within on those states. That means I've not learned anything. That means my education, my worldview has not changed. So, and I, I don't get defensive about this. I just pity those who feel like you must be restricted because the restriction that is being advocated has nothing to do about development. It is other people who have very limited view of the world who feel like they should cage you within their own box of thinking and yeah. philosophy. And I have always rejected that in my life. Yeah, I agree that you have yeah. to refuse to, you know, be confined to a space. Yes. However, you know, going back to this, going back to this issue, there are, there are numerous great things that you can achieve at that local level. One of the, one of the reasons why, why I go back to this is that Nigeria is a very complex country. It's not complex. You know, this is why I disagree with you. Nigeria okay. is not a complex nation. So Nigeria is easy and... It's, 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 see, in the hands of incompetent mm. people, mm. everything is complex. You know, it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm not using the analogy to yeah. insult people with yeah. uh, living with disabilities. It's just like a leprous finger. Mm. It, you know, if you keep a cup of tea within a lep, you know, set up, it can't, it can't hold it. Mm. And that's what is happening with Nigerian leadership. The, part of the agenda of those who have mismanaged Nigeria is to make everybody believe that Nigeria is complex. That is why we're not able to progress. Mm -hmm. Because they want to also, it's, it's part of this limitation you're talking about. Yeah. They want to limit the citizen to a certain level of expectation that doesn't think about progress. Mm -hmm. You know, like exponential progress. And other nations who don't limit themselves are making that exponential progress. Israel is not as big as Nigeria, yes. right? Mm. It could be complex because it's surrounded by its enemies. <laughs> but how is it that they're able to survive and they're mm. contributing largely to global scientific discovery? And do you know how many persons out of Israel have gotten the Nobel Prize? You understand? Nigeria, the last time we got one was 1986, and 200 million of us, I don't know the population of Israel on top of my head right here. But why is it that people who, are, who don't limit themselves, that's, that's the kind of exponential progress, exponential progress they make. It is the brand of leadership we have in Nigeria. And the way Nigeria has been governed over these years, that is making you mm. stay on top of this question. Like, why don't, why don't the no. best go for yeah. the lowest rank and the idiots no, you need can to, then I control think, the country? Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm free to say that because... That's exactly the problem. Mm. You you conf you want the, you want your best to go and start small, but you want the worst to get the best positions in your country, and that's yeah. why you are here. You know, somebody's going to tell you that mm. uh, after seven years in the UK, that you cannot govern more than a local government. <laughs> you know, when as a matter of fact, if you yeah. stay two days in your local yeah. government today, yeah. you are going to be restless. Yes. Not because it's unsafe, but it's because you have outgrown of course, the I village. I was, I was there recently. Exactly. Yes, yeah. So, it's, yeah, you might have some kind of euphoria to go back to the village. Yeah. Yeah. But the girls who yeah. used to be, like, attracted to you in the village, <laughs> when you lived in the village, are not the kind of girls that yeah. you get attracted to. Of course. Yes, throughout yes, this year. Yes, Sometimes yeah. you'll be asking, where's that girl? And then yeah, you yeah. see her, like, oh, my God, I can't yeah. believe yeah. I had a crush on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm using I'm using that example yeah. not to denigrate anyone. Yeah. But it's because the the, the further you go into the world, the more mm. exposed you are, mm. the more powerful your ideas can become. There are also a lot of people who have been to where I have been who are stuck in you know, in, in, in the Nigerian box. Uh, it's just like we joke about it, like those people left Nigeria, Nigeria didn't leave yes, them. Of course, yeah. So and you see them on the streets of London. They behaving, make some, yeah, yeah, behaving the same way people behave yeah, in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. See them in the U.S. behaving the same way mm. some local localities behave here. Yeah. So uh, what I'm explaining to you is that philosophically, you know, uh, and intentionally, mm. you people grow beyond limitations. And I'm one of those because I've I've yeah. been through a lot in life to know that the human spirit is powerful. It's just like in the human body. 
you know, with a very positive spirit, can push itself to any level. I use running marathons as well. I started running marathons in 2013. You know, before 2013, the guy who introduced me to marathon, I used to think in my mind that he's crazy. Because, you know, one day I went to bring him from the Berlin Marathon. He fell asleep in the car. He woke up uh, in the night and I said, what's pushing you all around the world running? Don't you have anything to do with your life? Yeah. He said, no. Why don't you try it out? Mm. You know, by the time I started it, I was like, wow, this is a whole new spectrum of human physical power. Yeah. But if you don't push it, you can never get it. If you have the belief that you can't run one mile, you won't be able to do a mile. But I did marathon, I've done marathon eight different times yeah. after I was introduced yeah. to it. Because why? Mm. I imbibed that belief that the human body can be pushed to its limits only if you apply the idea that there's, a, there's all parts of your body can work to achieve that goal. And that's why I'm different. Uh, and that's why I don't usually, if it's not for you, I don't have this, I, I would have dismissed it a long time ago because no. it has no value yeah. in where I aspire towards or how I aspire in life yeah. um, and where I think our country should be. So keep, keep limitations aside, right? Mm. I think the argument also goes to the fact that there are, there are top-down approaches, there are bottom-up approaches, right? In every country that has become what she is today, or in most developed countries, yes. what you see is a bottom-up approach where whether it's the local governments or the local councils or the states, whether, for example, for example, in America, a perfect example is America, mm. that practices a true federal system of government, not what you have in Nigeria, yes. right? We are even in Florida, whether it's in New York, whether it's in um, Oregon, whatever state you are, those governors are determine what even goes on in their states. The president can be whoever the president can be. It could mm -hmm. be Biden, it could be Trump. But so long as you have it, for example, look at COVID and look at the role that DeSantis played in Florida. Compare that with other states like New York and other states. You, you see the importance of local leadership in a true federalism, in a true in the country that practices that system. UK can be another example of where you have the importance of local councils. So these are bottom-up approaches that show you that if you have good leaders at that local level, look at, for example, London today, look at, compare London to what mm. London was in the past. So you can see that at those levels, people can really make great differences or great positive. I'm not saying, so, that, so, I'm not saying that. So, so your, your whole argument yeah. is that Except you go through those. No, no, no I'm not, not, not. So accept, if, if it's yeah. not, you know, yeah. then you you also look at another trance of argument. Yeah. Which is that the London you're talking about, the Spain you're talking about, yeah. Dubai you're talking about, mm. that we all love to showcase. Mm. They were they came from the ideas of people who don't think small. Yeah. You understand? That did not eliminate or would not eliminate the local government council yeah. uh, chairman who loved to ride on a bike. You know, it also does not limit a guy in the UK who feels that the London, um, the London skyline mm. is too drab. You know, and it started this idea of building skyscrapers mm. that are energy efficient, that makes London look better than it used to be. Yeah. They could be architects, they could be builders, they could be people who just form ideas and give it to people who can implement them. So, but. How, how why we are different here is that in, is that we have so much to cover and what we have done wrong is that we're actually not doing what you're saying we're not building anything from the bottom up we allow the worst to get the best position in this country mm. you can't point to me i don't know uh, you may not have experienced nigeria leadership but i've experienced seven presidents mm. in my lifetime uh, starting from the 80s, 1989 yeah. was when I got to the university, mm. up to now. And I can tell you that all the seven presidents I've experienced, from Babangida to the one who is there now, Buhari, they're not even qualified to be local government chairman of any nation, including Nigeria. So when you keep pushing the argument that you must go and start small, you are creating space for mm. those who don't know anything who starts big. That's my argument. You have not also mentioned or considered the issue of age, the age of ideas, mm. and that 
some of these countries you mentioned were run by young people, mm. you know, at their formative age. But you leave your own country to be run by analog thinkers. And these other countries you're talking about are run by people who have digital you know, uh, brains, brains says, yeah. almost, who have the capacity to implement, and all those people who spend most of their time in the hospitals they built in the UK. Yeah. So, so the argument for me is super flaws, yeah. that somehow a guy who did not play for Yimba, mm. you know, cannot play for Liverpool. Mm. It's, 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 you know, it's, it doesn't make, it doesn't yeah. make any, it doesn't make the argument, you know, standard for me. And that's why, we're, I'm not struggling with you over it. I'm just yeah. saying that there is no law in the world that says that I must go and start from one of those states no. when yeah. I have the capacity to run Nigeria. I think it depends you know? on And what, yeah. the other arguments on the side of like, oh, Nigeria is complex. Defeat, mm. it, it has been defeated. The yes. size of Nigeria, the entire geographical size of Nigeria is not up to that of Alaska. Well, you have the, the, and there are 50, yeah. there are 50 states yeah. in the u.s yeah just I, I wanted to bring that to correct some of your own argument yeah. that if i'm governor of alaska so yeah. they have more resources mm. at my disposal i have a bigger state than nigeria mm. they have task codes i'm able to get a lot of things done mm. and i can still do it and aspire to be president of the u.s or i can decide i don't even want to be president of the u.s and i could also be a local government guy in the US yeah. or an activist, a community activist like Obama was, who was senator for just a few months and became president because there is nothing that says a guy who was never a local government chairman or a governorship candidate yeah. cannot be president of a country. That has been established over the years in several climes, in several jurisdictions and uh, political spaces across the world. Yeah. So if you keep arguing that if someone hasn't been local government chairman of Wondo South local government and then ultimately become the uh, governorship, uh, uh, the governor of Wondo State. And then if you want to keep that argument going, then he must go from there to this, to become a senator of no, no, uh, his Wondo uh, West no, before he's then yeah. qualified to be president. Those no. arguments should not even come up of course not. in, in the modern discussion yeah. of political uh, future of this country yes. and any country for that matter mm. it, because the argument doesn't follow. Those people who have done all of this, you can have no record to trace to them that anyone can be proud think, of. Yeah, I yes. think it depends on what you define as small. So, for example, if I were governor of Lagos State, that's, that's not small for me. If, as if president of Nigeria, of, it's small for me. <laughs> <laughs> Nigeria why, is small for why, my why, kind of <laughs> ideas. I'm serious. No, then why go for you then? What, what, but, but you get my argument, right? My, my argument is depends on what, what you define. Now. So, for example, I'll point you to, for example, Enugu State under Sullivan Shimon, mm -hmm. right? In my opinion, excellent governor of Enugu State. So... I want to. I want to, us to go on yeah. vacation to Enugu State no, <laughs> and drive on a road yeah. built by Ch uh, Sullivan, Sullivan that is hundred kilometers. Okay, that's still alive, still there. Okay, how functioning. about how about? How I want about, us to take yeah. you, take our children, and go yeah. back to Enugu about, State and put them in how schools. How about FCT under Erufa then? The FCT under Erufa under anybody is the FCT we are in today. No, but my point it's still is still a point glorified is, slum. Yes, but my point is the roads that we are built under Erufa, the development strides that we are made under Erufa. Okay, go to Wiki for example in River State. Wiki. Who, Do you know that I cover all these people? Like yeah, I cover, I, yes. I've covered all these regimes you are mentioning. Yeah, I'm not saying these are that, superficial I'm not achievements. That, perfect. that yeah. they're, they're not perfect, but it can They should not even be. They should but, not even be talked about in no, terms of governance. You understand? Yeah. Do you know that mm. in the university when I was in the U.S. doing my master's degree yeah. in public administration, we had to study cities, mm. you know, by mayors that you have never heard about yeah. before, including New York City. We compare mayors. We also study police departments. Yes. And how they reform them. Mm. You know, there's no, the only thing you can study about Nigeria is corruption. Yeah. In any school, even well, in Nigerian schools, you cannot pick out a city or a state by any of these governors since 1999 and be studying them. Somebody so that, will not think there's something wrong with you. So there is nobody since 1999 you can point to. You are pointed to the, the you have pointed to some of them that I know did not perform. So, but who who in your opinion who in your opinion out of the citizens of Nigeria is doing well or has done well? No one that world. I know of. I mean, if if that would be the case, half of Nigerian young people would not be trying to get out of the country. 
I think I, 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 disag- I disagree with you. That's fine. Point. That's in fine. But, that I, I think, but you, you, you also must yeah. ensure that in disagreeing, you have an alternative view that shows that somebody mm. has done quality work. Quality enough yeah. Yeah. for you to say, wow, there's a city in Nigeria that I can compare how to about, a city. How about, how, about, how about Akwaibom then? I've been to Akwaibom. These are just one street capital uh, cities. I think, you understand? I think I've been to Akwaibom so as well. There are, I've been to Akwaibom there are a variety of indexes, yeah. indices that you use in mm. in in calculating governance. Yeah, it's not just one highway. Of course, yeah. And a street, a bunch of street lights. Yes. That are powered by a generator. Mm. In fact, that's an anathema. <laughs> mm. Nigeria is probably the only place where you can find street lights, you know, powered by generators. generators. Yeah. In other climes, street lights, if they can't be powered by the national grid, mm. they'll be powered by solar energy, you know. Mm. But if they have solar energy grid, maybe you do one or two, mm. the rest is generator. It's just superficial. So, in, and this is why the argument of, you know, for an urgent need of real leadership mm. is important. So that you can have parameters to judge leaders with, not perceptions. No, I agree. You I, know, yeah. it's a, so you can't find, for instance, a governor mm. in the U.S. who has a hype man saying, you know, as it is, we toss it. Did. You know, that's like a joke. You know, I've never seen a governor in the U.S. who has people to come and commission a road. I'm mm. serious. Mm. When a road is done, the way to people commission it. So allow people exactly driving on top. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so if we just if you cut out all the rubbish these people do, mm. you will know that these guys are just clowns in terms of God. And that's why we're where we are today. We don't need to look too far. You know, you, you, it is by the quality of leaders or leadership in the country mm. that you determine why a country is in a particular state. Yeah, uh, it is it's such that, come, I mean, uh, Syria alone and Liberia that went through war, war that were stopped by Nigerian soldiers, mm. are doing better, better yeah. in a lot of ways than we are doing today. Yeah. So, if you want to judge Nigeria, just close your eyes, tell the truth. You know, and let the devil be ashamed. This you is know, Sunday. Yeah, the reason why, I, the reason <laughs> why I I stay, I want to, I, I stayed on this for the amount of time I did was, mm. there are millions of people who look up to you all over Nigeria and yes. over the world, right? Your, I think I will compare you with people like Deji Adeya and Jiwa and Aisha Yeshifu as, as people that are true believers in their cause, by people that people that you can buy with money, people that have been consistent for the past twenty plus years and speaking the same message, no matter whose ox is God, right? And the fear is that you're 51 years old, right? Yes. Yeah. The fear is that as time goes on, as things happen in Nigeria, you may never get to lead Nigeria and, God forbid, die without having these ideas implemented by yourself. Someone else obviously will take up these ideas, but I mean, you yourself, right? The, the fear that myself and people that really you know, admire you is that time is not on your side. You know, perhaps you have, and you always, you always rally, rally against old leaders, right? You don't want to become who you've always been fighting against. Oh, yeah, this is why I keep going to the father because no, no, I, it is much I, I, I think it's. To lead I think you're, to you are looking at me from the point of ambition. You know, well, no, that's, that's my, ambition, ambi- my ambition, no, ambition in life, yeah. right? You yes. know, and maybe you want to delve into my history a little bit. Mm. You know. Because I didn't just pop up no, in the last. Years. That's why I said yeah. twenty years. I'm, I didn't. I didn't pop yeah. up in the last twenty years. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been around for three decades. You yes. understand? Yeah. When I was fighting for democracy in 1992, mm. I wasn't looking for those state democracy. Mm. You know, when I went to jail, when I was in my twenties, I wasn't looking for my local government type of democracy. Mm. You know, otherwise I would have just finished university not participate in one single protest, mm. graduate, go to do my NYC, and go back to my loved Ondo state. Mm. I won't have a broken nose. I won't have the injuries I have today. I won't be missing my family if I was only interested in a limited space of development. Mm. And you raise the issue of ambition. I don't have such an ambition to be governor of a state that is driving around a convoy of cars more than tractors, you know, just so that I can prove that I came to this country to become a governor and I have now become a governor Mm. and I'm fine, you know, and maybe now I can be president. No, that's not the idea. The idea is to change narratives, is to change minds and to power 
a higher level of understanding that a country like this could work if good people get involved and don't shy away from taking on responsibilities yeah. and taking on ambitions that sometimes people feel like it's bigger than them. Mm. I have, I, I, you know, the idea of fighting for democracy was bigger than a 22 year old in 1993. Yeah. And I st stuck my head out. I was willing to go, to, I went through hell. You know, I was almost killed in the process. And when the country was there working some 30 years later, I'm still doing the same thing. So my ambition has never been limited the way you are describing it. And yeah. I don't know what the Jadeonju's ambition is No, no. The, in life. The, I, I don't know what yeah. Aisha's ambition is. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that because we join hands at a protest that yeah. we have the same focus, no, of course, no, that's not what direction yes. or ambition what in life. Yeah. I respect all of them. Yeah. And I've worked with all these people you yeah. mentioned and a lot more of them. Yeah. But I'm not, I mean, you know, you, what I see this conversation doing is putting me in a box. I no, don't no, belong no, in any box. No, no, that's not. No, that, that's <laughs> to not the point that we are spending no. one hour no, discussing no, no, why no, we should not. not, not why we should not, not go to our past never, we'll we'll not even enter, my, yeah. my point is that you know, it's not just about yourself, right? Are, because your, are, your your position are, that oh, you may not become what you, that's no, no, that's fine. If I don't yeah, if I don't get to become Nigeria's president, it doesn't end it. If 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 one of the ideas I believe in could bring about the change that yeah. I've always preached about. Yeah. I'm fine. You understand? Yep. Okay. By the time mm. by the time Nancy Mandela was out of prison, you know, he had a different idea about the South Africa he wanted. Mm. Most of you don't know why he didn't come back a second time. Because that South Africa that he had at the back of his mind wasn't unraveling in front of him the way he wanted it. And he stepped aside and let new sets of people carry on. Mm. And but he remained a statesman until he, that there are people who never governed a space in Nigeria's history that are more respected than those who did tour three yeah, times. But, yeah, Obasanjo yeah. and Awolowo, for instance. Obasanjo was led Nigeria three times now. As a military guy and as a civilian for two times, people in this part of the world respect Awolowo who never became president more than they respect Obasanjo. At least I know from my own, uh, my own analysis of how people rate both of them. So you leave me to worry about how old I get no, my, yeah, uh, we, before yeah. I become the governor yeah, of the chairman is, of the local yeah, government. No, that is, is not yeah, my worry. Yeah. My worry is to make sure that yeah. in my lifetime, or after my lifetime, yeah. I did my best for my country. Yeah. You know, and that nobody should be limited including yourself, your children, anybody in the mm. future, to say, well, some people are designed to lead Nigeria, whether they know what they are doing or not, and others no, should go I'm and not, start small. I don't think that's... I, no, I, I don't personally think that's, no, don't I, find that to um, be... I don't think that's be, the point I'm trying to get across. To be the point a, I, the point a I'm way to look to, at this. The point I'm trying to get across is, yes. that, is the fact that it's much easier for you It's not. There's win. nothing easy for a person who has okay, so what a do good you, agenda. What do you rate your chances as no, next I'm not, year? I'm then, not rating uh, my chances. Okay. You know, and I'm not taking chances. Mm. I'm in it for what I believe yeah. will bring an end to the misery that this country has been associated mm. with. You understand? So, so many of people, including yourself, might be this this whole argument mm. or conversation we're having might be driven by your love for my ideas, my person, mm. to the point that, you know, you are frustrated that, look, these guys may never make it mm -hmm. because they are not the right, um, not not that we're not the right kind of people, but the, the operational space mm. is not for the right kind of people. That might be your worry, but that's not my worry. Yeah, but my worry is so, that yeah. you are going to, this kind of mindset mm. is going to push all of us into another bundungo. I don't think That so. will last longer yeah. than another forever. Yeah. And then we'll now be looking for people with ideas mm. to come and save us. Yeah, I think I it's think not that we will. Yeah. We, we will be looking. We will be looking for. If mm. this mindset persists with the majority of voters, you are setting yourself up for another failure. And I guarantee you, I will. I will be generous to sit with you another year from now yeah. and review it. And you'll be like, wow. No, the issue. If if that yeah. is, if we don't get it right. No, the issue is this, right? What we want is a better Nigeria. Not that everybody wants a better Nigeria. A, so not, not better. That a is, great Nigeria. That is an absorption. That's what most 
most rational thinking Nigerians, most, See, that's, most that's, that's an assumption. Average. A lot of people don't want a better Nigeria. So, but most people are not happy with what we are seeing in Nigeria Exactly. Today. And so if me, you are not happy, yeah. you should go for the best. Yes, but to achieve that end goal, right? Yeah. There are numerous ways that we can use to achieve that, that end goal. That is your own belief. Not just my own belief, That's right? That's your own belief yeah. in the sense that there are multifarious ways yeah. to solve Nigeria problems. Yes. And that might be true, mm. but you cannot dissipate your energy trying to fix a problem yeah. that has one direct solution first. And you go you in know, the... You know, you know yeah. it's, it's just like taking a destination. You want to go yeah. to an Anambra. Uh, mm. You're going to get on a plane going to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> and you say, well, it's because I want to check from Ghana if Anambra is safe first. Yeah. So when you now decide to start going to Anambra, you still have to fly back to Lagos. Yeah. And then fly to, instead of just going directly to mm. Anambra. You see, this is what they call circumlocution in science. Plenty yeah. of motion, no movement. The issue, the issue is this, right? When I think of Nigeria as a whole, like when I think of Nigeria on a on that big level, like right, that national level is is so depressing, right? When I exactly. think of how do you solve this enigma or how do you solve this irony or how do you solve this complex puzzle called Nigeria, you start to look at the religious aspects, right? You start to look at the tribal the tribal aspects, you start to look at the all the we have like two hundred ethnic groups in Nigeria alone. Three hundred two hundred and ten. Is three hundred and ten, right? Yes. So you, you start to look at the complexities in mm. these, trying to solve. In fact, even I think even the insecurity issue as well tells you how complex these issues it's are. The, see, that's the, that's what I want to. Yeah. Let us talk about more. Okay. And not where to start. Yeah. Is that there's none of these problems that are complex. Mm. Yes. The insecurity problems, geographically, has an origin. Yeah. Or there's a reason why there's insecurity in the country. Most reason, the reason why there's insecurity in the country is because of injustice, social economic injustice, course, first yeah, and I foremost. Agree, yeah. People are, we never made investments when mm. we had money uh, in ensuring that people are happy in this country and that they make physical, mm. economic, educational progress that will make them feel like this is a nation they should be in. Yeah. We are still the nation that killed three million Ebos, of course, just to satisfy our ego mm -hmm. that we need unity. Mm. So I never did anything about it. Now we never stopped killing, mm. even after the civil war ended. So we are the country where they had so much money, they didn't know what to do with it. They wasted it on a cultural event called Festac. Mm. So we are the country that keeps selecting, you know, or accepting all kinds of terrible excuses for leadership. Mm. So. They all came from a combination of this. If you look at the map of Nigeria, the insecurity in the north has religious connotations. Of course. It also yeah. has economic connotation, yes. banditry, cattle yes. rustling. If you come down, it's also economic, kidnapping, uh, general armed robbery. Mm. Uh -huh. You go to the southeast, there is insecurity based on agitation for nationhood. Yes. And if you go down from the southeast, you have the south south, there's militancy over control of resources. Mm. You go to the southwest, there is now combined, mm. uh, it's, it's now a security based on general crime and also st statehood and nationhood. So if you look at this from the geographical point of view, you understand what it is and you can start talking about how to solve the problem. Yeah. But when you are tackling an insecurity or banditry with the same weapon you are tackling the insecurity of militancy and of nationhood, you've gotten it wrong. If you see Namdi Kano as a terrorist, the same way you see uh, Humeva Toji, then you've gotten it wrong as a leader because they don't have the same motive for yeah. agitation. So, but you can also have a one size fits all solution to it, which is investment in people's lives, investment mm -hmm. in you know, walking around the insecurity, ensuring that, because part of the injustices we are doing to different parts of the country, is also extended to the people who should be fighting insecurity. So yeah. such that they have, they lack motivation. There's a lot of policemen, soldiers we see, we talk to all the time. They have no motivation to fight mm -hmm. anymore because they know how to defeat insecurity, but they don't want to go and fight for it because they know their bosses 
don't have any commitment to ending yeah, the security. They lack the will. They lack the will. They are yeah. more interested in making money off of the insecurity in the country. Yeah. So, except the leadership comes from his place yeah. where he understands this mm. and don't oversimplify it by saying, oh, it's because the Muslims want to convert Nigeria to Islam. No, it's not all the Muslims that support Boko Haram. Muslims are now today the victims of Boko Haram. Of course, yes. yes yeah. The bandits don't believe in anything. They just want money. Mm. And when you've int I've interviewed a couple of them who are very direct that when they see all these governors driving in convoy and they can't find anything to eat, they're upset and they want some part of it for themselves. Yeah. And that's what is driving them. That's their motivation. You go to the Southeast, they're asking for justice. That, you know, you can't keep treating us like third class citizens in yeah, the country. Yeah. And you bring in your soldiers to shoot us when we say we have an identity and we want in Nigeria yeah. that works and we want restructuring, we want to sit down and discuss. You know, we can't discuss because the unity of the country is sacrosanct. Mm. You are insulting them. They don't believe that any unity can be built on blood uh, letting yeah. as you had in the country. You go to the militants, they say to you, well, the Nigerian government officials and oil companies are thieves. Anyway, mm. we too, we want to take our oil. And we're refining it and selling so that we yeah. can survive because we don't have schools, we don't have anywhere to farm anymore due to pollution. Mm. Except you have this fundamental understanding of the security, you can't solve the problem. Yeah. And to understand how to solve each of them. Because it's not a one size fits all. Yeah. The bullet and the and the and the gun is not going to end insecurity in Nigeria because those who are causing insecurity also have bullets and guns of course, yeah. to push back against the state. No, I agree. I, so yeah. so they, when you have non-state actors mm. controlling the bulk of state land, yeah. nations, the country's uh, land, then you are in trouble. Mm. And that's why sometimes people understand that Nigeria is becoming an impossible space to govern because there's too many state actors controlling territory. Mm. You know, in the southeast today, I don't think there's anybody who has the courage to plant a flag mm. in front of a school. Before the national, before the morning assembly, yeah. you can't plant the Nigerian flag. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the flags hoisted on those posts in the south is yeah. Biafra uh, flag. Yeah. They don't listen to Radio Nigeria anymore. They listen yeah. to Radio Biafra. Yeah, yeah. So you can't solve that with the use of force. Yeah. Those ones you have to find a way to solve those problems. And you can't force. You can't also solve that by clamping people like Kano in jail. It's mm -hmm. not going to work. Each time you take Kano out of the way. There's a million Kanos or some who feel that Kano is even too weak. Yeah. They need to up the ante. So that's where leadership matters the most. And that's where people with brain and ideas should not be in sequestered to go and lead in a small corner. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. yeah. I agree I agree with everything you said. For me, I think yeah. one of what what I will add is um I think according to Max Weber, he said that only the state should have a monopoly on violence. Well, and I think the state, state doesn't have that monopoly exactly because yeah. the state is too weak. Here. Exactly. Yeah. So that's 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 a big issue when you mm. have not like you said, non state actors controlling and people like territory. What's in the one in um from from Bios, uh, Tompolo, for yeah. example. Yeah. People, yes. people like Tompolo. Yes. Uh, that guy as controlling things that should never happen. So you look it at should. the issue of Tom Polo. Yeah, Tom Polo is given a contract to protect all the pipelines in Niger Delta region. Mm. The state has officially announced that he has no capacity to protect national assets. Mm. So that's the end of, of course, the of navy course. Yeah. and all the security forces whose yeah. job would have been to, to do protect that right yes, there. Yes. You have subsumed them under. To a private yeah. security. So you have privatized security mm, mm. in the section of the country. And then other people will take a cue from that. Yeah. Non-state actors and say, so Tompolo has his own. Yeah. Let me to take over exactly. a, a part of yeah. our oil assets so that you yeah. patronize me. Oh, you know, I just tear open all the yeah. all the pipelines. Yeah. So let's turn this insecurity issue. Mm. Who do you who do you think? I think the last the latest statistics has it that Boko Haram has killed that's 5,000 Niger people, not just Nigerians, really. Who do you think is sponsoring Boko Haram? I, I think Boko Haram was probably at the initial stage being sponsored for political reasons. Mm. Just the same way militancy started in the yeah. South South. It was political. But who, who exactly? Can you, do you know anybody? Like, well, I mean, there's, there's been an allegation yeah. and it's, we've tracked 
that the former governor of Borno State, Alimadu, Alimadu Sharif, okay. had a pact with Boko Haram. He even offered them a commissionership in his government. Okay. And that's where they started growing wings. Mm. So, and I'm sure there are several other persons who are behind it because they use them for different reasons, mm. including for religious reasons. I covered Boko Haram enough to know that a lot of Northerners or some Muslims were upset when people said Boko Haram was an Islamic uh, uprising. Yeah. You know, until Boko Haram started killing them in the mosque. You know, Boko Haram was strategic enough to start by killing Christians. Mm. And those who didn't understand the dynamics thought that was good, you know, at least they don't touch mm. Muslims. But now, they have concentrated on killing Muslims in mosque and, you know, the, the, the areas that they control. And w their goal is to create, you know, a caliphate controlled by them. And it's to grab part of Cameroonian land, Chad, Nigeria, mm. and create a caliphate and create their own state. And there were people who supported that. I don't know specifically who they are, but the Nigerian government keep telling us that they know some of them. The government of the United Arab Emirates did say uh, they arrested some people and jailed them. The government of Nigeria of last year said they have over 400 people in detention who are funding Boko Haram terrorism. They, today they did not prosecute a single one of them. So that means they know them yeah. and they are tolerating or directly supporting them. Do you think it was... Do you think it was manufactured? And I hate to say this really. Do you think it was... I know it was there before Jonathan, but do you think the the amount of violence we saw from Boko Haram was really manufactured or sponsored to get Jonathan out of office? No, I don't think so. <coughs> Considering that... If you remember, there were so many attacks by Boko Haram. Well, you know, any weak government yeah. would tolerate... It is the weakness of the regime of Jonathan. Mm that led to the escalation of the Boko Haram issue. For instance, Boko, when Boko Haram went and abducted Chibo girls, there was denial by the government, and then there was an action that allowed the girls to be permanently transported out of view mm. before they now started accepting it because there was global outcry. Mm. So had he done the job that he needed to do as the commander-in-chief, Boko Haram wouldn't have been as popular as it became. Yeah. They were also, and this is documented, stealing money's meant to defeat Boko Haram. Of course, yeah. yes. Yeah. So you cannot say that such a regime that mm. stole money's meant for uh, buying weapons to defeat Boko Haram and diverting such monies to elections mm. uh, was uh, was a victim of any kind of conspiracy. I think Boko Haram saw the Jonathan's period as a very uh thriving period for the kind of agenda they had they just saw him as a weak commander so what do, you, what do you think of Jonathan? Yeah. what do you think of him oh he's a very weak guy you know i i know that for a fact that he led a very he's a personally personally is a weak person you know he he didn't have the guts to lead the country and he's a um cronies and supporters mm. and officials understood that and they took full advantage of that uh, that's that's what Jonathan was. What do, what do you think of Peter B? I don't I don't see him different from the rest of them. Really? Yes. He would, as, as a matter of fact, Peter B was Jonathan's economic advisor mm. during the period of the theft of monies made for buying weapons. He was economic advisor to Jonathan. He doesn't like to talk about it, but you know I I'm in the media, so I know. Yeah. So, but Okay, I, I want to go into this topic in great yeah. detail with you, obvious, because of uh, obvious reasons, right? So, Peter B's chances, uh, I don't know what you think of his chance, and I would like to go into that with you, yeah. but you, are you accusing him of having something to do with the theft of funds under Jonathan's era as an economic it, advisor? It's, it, it's very straightforward. Yeah. Peter B was a member of PDP mm. of the 2000, I think, before he became... He joined the PDP in 2003 yeah. and then became governor under Abga mm. because Abga was popular in the southeast, yes. particularly his home state, Anambra. Mm. And when he was done with uh, Abga or as governor, he went back to PDP. Mm. 
you know. So when you guys make all these arguments about Peter be being a new person, I don't know where it mm -hmm. comes from. I can understand the sentiments of people who have a candidate that they will vote for or want to, you know, uh, push down the throat of voters, regardless of his character flaws, mm -hmm. you know, or antecedents. The there was a group that pushed Buhari that same way and regressed it today. So these things are not new. This political manipulation of uh, minds. Mm. Uh, it's not new to, to me in Nigeria. It's, I've even seen worse things. When Buhari and when Babangida was in power, there was a whole chorus of people say he should not leave power because they can't find anybody who is qualified to be president. When he left power, they denied him. They said, no, I was not part of his agenda to elongate his tenure. And then came Abacha. Mm. There was a two million man match, or five million man match, or 20 million man match in this Abuja, uh, led by a young man who was a youth yearning for Abacha, one Kanu. And the same argument that Abacha, nobody can fill his shoes. Mm. And as a result, Nigerians should let him return to power, yeah. uh, change his uniform. Mm. And there were five political parties, all the five political parties endorsed him before he died. Mm. So these things are not new. Obasanjo came and uh, people were saying he cannot just leave after two times. He should continue with the third term mm. and the, before it collapsed. So what haven't we seen in this country? People just come, they manufacture their candidates or the characters of the, the, the political figure they want to force down people's throat. And they start arguing, you know, no matter how flawed and super flaws the, the, the arguments are, they keep pushing it, the narrative. Yeah. Yeah. And this narrative doesn't, it's always devoid of common sense because it includes blackmail, it includes suppression and oppression of other people's views. Nothing else could be wrong until they reach their final destination, which is destination of failure. And it happens because people refuse to question uh, the candidates or these figures when they come up in the horizon and yeah. say, you know, Peter, you should, like the Peter B you were mentioning, you know, I'm sure it has never occurred to you that he was Jonathan's advisor, economic advisor. No, I knew that. I knew yes. that he was, yes. And that there was stealing going on at that period, mm. massive. And, and an economic advisor did not resign. He said he didn't. He was Atiku's vice presidential candidate in 2019. When I also ran for office, he was a vice presidential candidate. I was a presidential candidate. Mm. And everybody knew how Atiku became presidential candidate at that time, how they were moving money up, uh, up and down. You know, but you want us to just have what we call selective amnesia. Mm. Forget the part that hurts us. Yeah. Because this is your candidate. I don't care whether he's a good man or not. We just we just must force everybody to vote for him. Yeah. And when people say to you they don't vote for that kind of candidate, you get upset. Yeah, that's I think that's a that's a big deal. And that's yeah. and that's and that's what you see online these yeah. days, right? But people, some of us are who have history, yeah. who understand the political horizon of Nigeria. Yeah. We don't get we don't get carried away by yeah, but why do you, why do you think that, that why do you think that's the case? Why do you think that P2B supporters why do you think one he has gotten so much more so much more publicity than you? And then why do you think that P2B supporters are, are not open to any, any kind of opposition or criticism? Why why it, are they why I was, are they willing to? It's like a tribe with yeah. them. Like you're either so, supporting so, P2B yeah. or you're against yeah. us. So I was in the US when um, Trump came on the horizon. Mm. We're the same set of people. But before Trump came, what they used to call Tea Party. Then the Tea Party collapsed, but the remnants were the ones who pushed Trump's candidacy. Yeah. Uh and during that period, nothing mattered to an average Trump supporter. It's like, it's either Trump, it's either my way, or the high seas. Mm. It's, it's the same thing. These are political experiments carried out, you know. And Peter Obi and his handlers have other, you know, uh, connotations to it. You know, part of it, rightly or wrongly, is that it is a question of justice, political justice that power must move to the Southeast. Mm. Uh -huh. So that is there. There is a connotation of religion. Mm. The Christians saying, you know, the Buhari and the APC regime has cheated us and they have even rubbed it on our faces mm. by selecting a Muslim Muslim ticket. Mm. So then there's just hysteria. Uh, and that's driven by social media influencers uh, who are out there 
you know and the fourth part is that there's a lot of people who are then afraid to be different mm. because of you know what we call catawalling and harassment mm, mm. so there are people who are just quiet because they are so traumatized by what they suffer even if they try to be different mm. and afraid to offend those who are his uh, supporters who would brook no opposition mm. but if you look at the nature of democracy that should actually be a sign for people to be worried about the future i agree yeah, yeah. i agree yeah. that you have a political movement as yeah. they like to call it that says to you if you are not for us that's you are against that's us that's a big and uh, yeah. you you already put in place what led to uh the second world war yeah that's, this is what this is what yeah. i always tell people and I'm, yeah. I'm sorry to cut you short but yeah. this is the reason why i've like i've said something against p2b on it on, mm. online yeah and the way they come for you man yeah. that's uh, the, the hateful words they use yeah it was people people people, people that i thought were level-headed yeah i mean i don't know what you think about what soludo wrote against not against really soludo was kind of like a rebuttal yes to the kind of online hate he got yes I don't know, but you could see the. the, the, the but that, but say, that, that's what well, I've been saying. You know. It's a political strategy. Yeah, you know, but it is not a political strategy that will work in the long run. Yeah, yeah, it's bound to fail. Mm. And the reason is that you're dealing with a diverse people. Mm. You know, so so you use this strategy. Let's even assume it works, mm. and it gives you know it wins Aso Rock. For Peter Obi, mm. where do we go from there? <laughs> so then you now have a Peter Obi regime where people cannot talk. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to work. Exactly. I was. So, I told them if you're going to, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're electing a dictator, tell us. Let us exactly. know. Exactly. So, you know, but even even a dictatorship cannot work in exactly, Nigeria. Exactly. Exactly. This is the same Nigeria that defeated Buhari the first time yeah. when he was the military. Defeated Babangida. Defeated yeah. Abacha. Yeah. So he defeated Obasanjo. Yeah. We've had both civilian and military dictatorships. Yeah. You know, and you'll be shocked yeah. that if Peter will be accidentally wins, mm. the, the level of expectation of his supporters will be so overwhelming that they will turn on him. He will become yeah. a mince meat in a matter of weeks. So, yeah. and that is why I believe that mm. he's not in control of his so-called movement. Mm. And he doesn't personally also understand how politics work. Mm. You know, I doubt his level of political sagacity. That's the word to mm, use. Mm. For him to be riding on this kind of wave, yeah. assuming it's true. I don't think he saw it. Yeah. 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 No, he, he knows it. Yeah. No, look, Peter B is very shrewd. I've mm. covered him very well before. Yeah. This is the kind of thing he would do. You know, he will encourage, he likes to play safe. Mm. You know, even as governor of Anambra State, he, he rode to power you know, with little or no suspicion for his character. Mm. And when he got there, you're going to go ask the Catholics and the Anglicans, you understand, how he was using the division between those two groups, yeah. you know, to yeah. run the state. Yeah. That is why you see most of the people in the state, people like Soludo, just couldn't keep quiet after a while because mm. the lies were just too much. They see the back end of his era. Mm. They know the accounts. Mm. They know how bridges were built that were substandard, roads that were substandard. Mm. And to wake up every morning and hear that, oh, this guy turned an umbra to... He's laughable. Uh, yeah. It's so, yeah, it's laughable, he, he, yeah. I'm, I'm sure Soludo got to a point where he just couldn't stomach it anymore. Yeah. And then you add that to all the insults and the harassment, yeah, yeah. you know, he, I think he got caught up in it. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, he just woke up one morning and said, what the heck is this? <laughs> You know, let the let the let let the, let the yeah, heavens because fall. Did you read it? Did you read it? Did you read it? I read it, and you could you could tell that he was. It was just himself. Yeah, it was like, just. There was no error. There was no grammatical error in yeah. that whole. In that, I mean, it's a long, it was a it, long run. And and, run, and yeah. you know, and to set them up for, you know, he also applied a strategy. Yes. To set them up for like it's not over. Mm. He said this is number part one. one. Yeah. yeah. Part one. <laughs> and after they read the num the, the first part, yeah. they had to call themselves to order. Yeah. I heard they were they are now begging him like, yeah, hey, yeah. please, yeah, yeah. you know, so. It's, these are strategies, and so many of these strategies have backfired everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Look at Trump now. Mm. He's still popular with his, his supporters. Mm. But the daughter had to announce that, look, I'm not participating yeah. in your campaign. Second round, yeah. 
You understand? If he, it, and I'm right. sure the reason the daughter said it is that, oh, you know, we can't, I can't it's be part much. of this toxic much, yeah. relationship uh, that you have created out there, you know. Mm. Because there are reasonable people everywhere. And this is, for me, I love this period because it's going to be a period in history mm. that people will look back and like, wow, you know, I can't believe I wrote that on Twitter. Honestly, yes, like, I yeah, can't believe I yeah. insulted my neighbor. Like Honestly, this. It's I can't shocking. believe that. It's shocking. You know, Honestly, I, I'm, I'm sure you've been threatened in your it's DM shocking. Like, massively. Honestly, so, but are all these things necessary? Absolutely not. Yeah, because this is not going to lead to of good course, governance. Of course, of course. And with and anybody who saw the Buhari regime, yeah, and the way his supporters also behaved, mm. should have learned a very simple lesson from that. You can hardly find anybody who claims to be a Buhari supporter anymore mm. in this country. Of course. And yeah, they still yeah. got like maybe nine months to go out there <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah. Because people like look back and say, there are people who have pulled down their Twitter yeah. handles, who those one who used to call themselves generals, yeah. colonel, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. on that Buhari. They used to love it. And all of them had a DP that had someone wearing a, um, yeah. in a nose mask, yeah, the yeah, general yeah. that died. Yeah. All those guys have fizzled out of history. Mm. And that would happen to every toxic movement. Mm. Every movement that's intolerant, that tells people they're nobody, that you know, denigrates others, mm. other citizens. You will come to your final bus stop one day where you look back and say, wow, this wasn't a destination I was. So, yeah. But when it was happening, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. But it will soon be cold. Yeah, because for me, I'm like, I'm like, even p my friends, people, people, people I've known for a while, I'm like, what happened? What sh it's like, it, I understand the country is hard. I understand yeah. the country. And I, and I get where they're coming from, right? Things are so bad that we need change. Yeah. However, you cannot, you cannot allow for blind followership. It's not possible. Yeah. No, you it's, cannot it's, allow for it's, it's, a system. It's the reason why people like us exist. We exist not only to bring about, but also to sign posts. Yeah. You know, what periods in history were art. Mm. You understand? When I was in my twenties and I was standing behind Apiola after his election was annulled, you know, it was a signpost in history, you know. Because I was the youngest in the crew there. Mm. All the other politicians were sitting inside the room. Mm. He just happened to follow me at that moment because I rejected the money he gave me. Mm. Which she said was transportation, eight hundred thousand dollars transportation. Mm. I said no, and it was when Nigeria's money still had some value. But it yeah. would probably be close to four hundred thousand dollars today. Mm. So, and he said, "Wow, I can't believe you rejected money." And he said, "Let me follow you, student leader." That's how we go to see Channels TV. The person who interviewed him that day was the proprietor, the person who founded Channels, John Momo. Mm. So, today. I didn't even know the video existed anymore until yeah. one morning yes. around 2017, 2018, yeah, someone yeah. sent me a link and said, wow, did you see yourself behind that? Yeah, yeah. I've been looking for the picture. I thought the only pictures existed, but the yeah. photographer who took the picture was working with Vanguard newspaper. It was mm. my friend. He died before I could lay my hand on it. Okay. And I, you know, I'm sure these newspapers don't have archives. Mm. So, so here comes the video. That's a signpost in history mm. that you participated in something right. Mm, mm. And it was a time a lot of Nigerians yeah. who could have done better yeah. were having a field day collecting bribes from yeah, Buhari, yeah. including traditional rulers, you know, and uh, religious leaders. Mm. Nothing new in all these things. So, so, so we're, that's why we're able to laugh over the excesses yeah. of it and say, look, you guys we'll get there. We will if, all get yeah, there. Even the idea of him being the best governor, right? I, t I tell it's people, go to Anambra too. There was an Anambra, yeah. I'd love two days ago, for a, I was there for a while. Yeah. I'm like, go to Anambra today and tell me, is, is that a reflection of a state that There's nothing in Anambra, and these are the three questions I've always asked him and his supporters. Mm. And his supporters, because he pretends that he doesn't see all this. Mm. Let's be out before you. It's like, can you show me a school built mm. by Peter mm. that is like, um, in the diaspora that you can send your child to, exactly. that you can put exactly. your child on a plane today yes. and say to yes. I want you to go to University of uh, Anambra State University of Oka yes. to go and study. Yes. Don't come back until the semester is over. I'll be sending you money. Yeah. Nobody can do that yeah. in diaspora. Yeah. Even Peter Obi himself did not send the children to those schools. Yeah. And I'm aware that the daughter did her master's while he was governor. She did it. Yeah. He went back to the UK to do it. Yeah. Of course, they make up a story now that she's teaching at a local school. 
but I'm sure that is not in uh, Anambra yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. So, so the facts are there. Listen, tell me an hospital you built that yeah. you yourself can check into yeah. when you have headache and say, yeah. "Hey, I built this hospital." So those are indices. I tell you, are parameters to show yeah. good leadership. The U.S. president, no matter how sick he may be, will not be flown out of the U.S. It's not possible to go to any hospital. Yeah, it's not they might fly in a doctor, yeah, secretly, yeah. But they are not flying him it's no to it's another. Yeah. Any illness that cannot be treated in the U.S. It's a matter of pride. Exactly, the yeah. president better die. Yeah. And but you have all these, you know, people. And the most dangerous thing is that you just make up all these stories about mm. you. You meet, you know, you mythologize a political character mm, mm. and then you start spreading what you don't even know about yeah him. yeah you know if it's a lie yeah. you accept it's a lie i mean yeah. you don't accept if it's yeah. a truth you don't you don't yeah. accept it's a truth yeah. you know yeah so it's I, I don't even want to over you know label this particular yeah. conversation you know my, yeah. but i know that we're just weeks away from yeah. finding the truth. My fear is that my fear is that just and then on this particular to conclude on this particular issue is that if he if he loses come February, my fear is that because of the way they've hyped him and the level of mythology around him, right? Mm. He's he's become like this god that people worship and mm. it's like it will be on nothing. People are gonna think that he was rigged out of rigged it. Out of it. Yeah. And people are gonna I'm sorry to say this die because mm. of yeah. This, so, you know. so, but this is why it's going to be easier uh, for those who are following him. Eyes will open earlier than normal, mm. and it is such that Peter will be the first person to get out of the controversy. Mm. So that's why we're telling people like you cannot have a non-revolutionary lead any revolutionary movements. Mm. This is not a movement that can deliver on your expectations. Yeah. Because I know, and I know, I need to be fair, there are so many young people who have latched on the support for Peter Obi, who genuinely feel like yeah. he's got That's something true. to offer. Very true. Very and true, yeah. and um, part of the pushback you see when people criticize him is that they cannot phantom that at the end of all this, they have been riding on a false premise mm. or false hope that this is going to lead to uh, some kind of deliverance. Mm. So a lot of them are also in denial mm. that, my God, these guys better not be false. Mm. So now I tend to keep up with that fake uh, messianic expectation mm. that they have thrown out against it. They have to keep pumping up yeah. the volume. And that's where it becomes really dangerous. Yeah. But, you know, there is a Yoruba saying that um, if a child is falling a tree mm. or is felling a tree, mm. you know, the elder will point to where in which direction it will fall. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't make the child believe that that's where it will fall. Yeah. <laughs> so you just, in one word, describe it to be one word. What, 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 is there any one word that comes to your mind when you, when you think well, of it? I've be? said it, you know, I've said it is like, it's, it's the best package fraud. <laughs> <laughs> I have said it. It's, it's, uh, so and me, he knows yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so talk to me about Namdekano because mm. there are some correlations you can see between Namdekano and PTOB. And that the way I'm coming from is this, right? When Namdekano began what he began, I don't think he saw how the movements will transform, mm. right? It's like a multi multi headed hydra. Yeah. That's what he, that's what he, that's what I in my opinion, that's what it became. The same thing you're seeing the same things with PTOB, right? When you start these movements, Obviously, you have no control over it. It kind of takes off and you lose control over it, right? So, but what do you think of Unam Dekano and the movement's eye pop that he's, that he's begun? You know, Unam Dekano is different from Peter in the sense that his own was driven by a mission. Mm. And the mission is he wants to liberate his people. Mm. Yeah? And the liberation of his people doesn't depend on the prescription of the oppressor. Yeah, He had already figured out I think from the beginning, if he didn't figure it out at the early stages, he yeah. found out uh, very quickly that he's up against a very powerful or a range of powerful forces yeah. who would not allow the realization of his mission. Mm. So, and he's sticking by it. He's not uh, calling a cow 
mm. my big brother because he wants to eat for more. No, so because yeah, I met yeah. him. Yeah. Yes. But he also, I think he philosophically understood that a social movement had emerged. It might be that it was not structured the way it, it grew faster than a structure yeah, could catch up with. Exactly. It. That might be. Yeah. But it's, he wasn't an accident and it's not a mistake of history. Mm. And if you look at the trajectory of the tribulations he's facing now mm. and the calm and mature way he's handling it, you know that he prepared himself likely for yeah. the outcome. So that's how social movements evolve. And then they get past their founders. Yeah. Yes. Uh, those who are Christians still believe it today. You know, the disciples of Christ did not even survive past just a little beyond Christ himself. Some of them were thrown into boiling hot palm oil. Mm. You know, some were skinned their life. But the idea of what he stood for has mm. survived over this. No, I agree, of yeah. course. So yeah. it's going to be the same with Kano. Mm. And it might be that there's an intersect between the emergence of Peter B mm. and the next phase of the Biafran struggle. Mm. Yeah. That maybe this is what needs, to, this is how eyes needs to be cleared, mm. you know, about. A lot of fallacies, and when it's done, the next stage is going to be easy. I don't know, but yeah, because for me, I think I'm I'm always very careful when it comes to Biafra and IPO. But I always, I'm always very careful to distinguish between the boats. Yes, for me, IPO for me became something that, in my opinion, most Igbos have come to regret. Yeah, you have. I was in I was an umbrella, like I said, for a couple of days. Monday, sit at home. Yeah. I couldn't leave my house on Monday. Yeah. So but, um, yeah. you, you come to the issue of Biafra. And I think most Igbos will agree that every most Igbos stay one Biafra. We have to we have to always distinguish those two because most people conflate the boats, IPOB and Biafra. They don't mean the same things, no. They are two different you things see, entirely. You see, you see, there is always an idea. Mm. And there's always a movement. Yes. Behind an idea. Mm. And what IPOB has become mm. to Biafra is the energizer yeah. of the desire to have Biafra. Yeah. That may not sit down well with the people of Biafra who mm. might think of incrementalism. Yeah. In fact, the movement of the enthusiasm behind OB might be their own way of saying, look, mm. we don't want to go the violent way. Yeah. Uh, and maybe we'll be fine in Nigeria if yeah. one of our son becomes the president, president of Nigeria. Yeah. That might be the reason why there is some enthusiasm around. It might be the political response to a movement that mm. they feel is a little bit too hot yeah. in attracting heat more than the people can handle. And they might need to use this as a cooling period yeah. uh, to determine. But that's why I said earlier that this might also be what will clear the eyes of. Yeah. The public. So, what, how about how about Sunday Boho? What do you think about what do you think of him? Well, yeah, it's the same thing. Same uh, thing. It's the same thing. The, the trajectories are the same. Yeah. But maybe his own case also. He came a little bit at the time the Nigerian state had developed his fang yeah. against that kind of struggle. So, like they were more cautious with Kano mm. when they started with him, because. They were just trying to figure out that this guy is serious is a joke. Mm, mm. And then by the time uh, Iboho came, the Nigerian state had developed his fang mm. against uh, these nation agitators. Yeah. So they took him out very quickly. They went after him quickly because they had already put in place yeah. the institutions and machinery for quelling you know, national, yeah. national agitations for the division of Nigeria. Yeah. 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 So that was that was his only crime. Yeah. But <laughs> is that he came at a probably <laughs> the wrong time. A, yeah. Not the wrong time, but uh, you know, at a very hot time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But is it all I mean coming back to yourself, right? Yeah. Is all this activism is it worth it? No, I believe it is. Because if somebody did not actively engage Nigerian state, I mean the US state, you and I I wouldn't have been able to enter America as a black person, even in twenty twenty two. Because mm. those who control the levers of power in those states did not 
they did not create a U.S. that was meant for yeah. blacks. Yeah. It was such that even the U.S. Constitution, when it was written by 50 people, mm. there were no blacks represented. Yeah. And there were no women. Because mm. they were creating a country that was going to accommodate those two demographics. Yes. Yes. But because the reason why I it is activism for me has to have an end. So let's bring in, for example, the example of Aisha Yishuf and, Ade, um, and Deji, right? Mm. For me, I believe that you have to get, and I think that's where I would say, yes, you're doing well in the sense that you, 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 you see the fact that activism, yes, is good, but, but, at, but at some point you have to be the one making the decisions, right? You have to now leave the streets of, of, of protests and become a decision maker and run for office, become a president, become a governor, a local government, councillor, chairman, because at some point there has to be an end mm. to anything your, anything your activism is going for. But in some cases in Nigeria, it's like, oh, we're just protest, let's just do like, for example, the NSAS protest, for example, right? And your idea of revolution now, at some point we have to, we young people have to be the ones occupying those seats or being that, be around that table where the decision makers are sat making those decisions. But we don't, we don't just want to be protesting or, or carrying our flags. We want to be running for offices like you're doing. Well, you see, you can't force an end on any form of activism, except mm. in the first place, you started the transactional activism career. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, that's why I don't like to, I don't like people who make business cards and write activists on there. <laughs> It means that I've been issue from the yeah, beginning. Exactly, yeah. You had an agenda, you know. It's not supposed to be a career like that. You're supposed to be defined as one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because you are active on the social justice yeah. sector. Mm. And um, so you can't force an end to it. In, for instance, I had thought that by 1993, mm. you know, it was time to go from the university go and do NYC, yeah. have kids, get, I mean, get married, have kids, and work my way towards retirement in life. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I work with somebody for 35. If I was working in a civil service, I would have five more years to go, mm -hmm. and I'll be retired by now. But there's no hope of retirement for me, just like there's no hope of retirement for Shoyinka, yeah. because there's no way we would not call on him, yeah. even if he's on a wheelchair, and he to wants, intervene. Yeah and social yeah, justice matters. Yeah. So it doesn't have an there. You can't force it. Yeah, yeah. So You believe in yeah. justice. You believe in uh, righting wrongs. Yeah. You, you can't stop until those yeah. wrongs are handled or taken yeah. care of. So, but what is, what, what, what is your idea of a revolution? Because I know that's one of your mantras, right? Revolution. It's right? not a mantra. What's it's your, my belief that okay, yeah, what's, this country what's, will... Yeah. The idea is to completely... Mm. disable the system as it is now yep. and junk it mm. and have a brand new system mm. well negotiated, defined uh, yeah. by citizens uh, hopefully new citizens to say look we've been yeah. going in the wrong direction time to go in the right direction and develop like the rest yeah. of the world because we are obviously being held back by forces that are well known to us yeah. whose ideas and ideology uh, concept of statehood or nationhood is that variance with the expectations and the rights of the people. Yeah. But so yeah. Revolutions must retire them. You know, it must go after them. It yeah. must demolish the idea and it must create a brand new nation uh, for our country. Unfortunately the Nigerian country has not become a nation. It was created yeah. as a business yeah. and yeah. it has remained as a business as usual. Mm. That's the way I describe it. Yeah. So the point must come that that must change completely. If it does, that yeah. it's only a revolution that I can change it. Because it cannot change on its own terms. Yeah. The controllers, the investors, mm. uh, the stakeholders, as they call themselves in Nigeria, in Nigeria today cannot let Nigeria change. Yeah. I, we, I, I see them in Abuja. I see their mentality. I see the way the outlook to life is different from mm. all this mm. conversation we're having. Mm. Because yeah. what happens is that it favors a few of them. In fact, they like Nigeria the way it is. They like a Nigeria where you don't have to construct roads because you have excuses that militants won't let you do it. Mm -hmm. So a governor that is asked to govern 23 local governments only has one city to control, mm -hmm. but he still gets allocation for How won't he be happy? Mm -hmm. He can shine in one city. Like the guy in Maiduguri, 
you know, he can turn my Duguri into Dubai if he wants. Yeah. But there are 22 other local governments that yeah. needs to be governed. But he doesn't have access to them. He doesn't control them. Yeah. Even if he wants to control them, he would rather be shining in my Duguri yeah. than to invest yeah. in yeah. all the parts of Borno State. Yeah. So that's, that's the way these things work mentally for yeah. them. But because the issue about revolutions is, and I agree with what you said, is that when people think of revolution, they look at Libya to 2011. No, those are not revolutions. At, those they are look at Iran, 1979. The, yeah, those those are not revolutions. Yeah, revolutions. No, because it's, it they is. Don't call it them, is. They don't call them revolutions until yeah. they meet the aspiration of the people. If if there's an upheaval, but an those, uprising, yeah. and it doesn't change but, things, yeah. nobody will call it. In those it examples, revolution. it did meet because initially the Libyans wanted Gaddafi out, and they yeah, got what but, they wanted. But, but you and I know, you yeah. know, even if you just go a little deeper yeah. on the surface, you know that that's not a revolution. That was, that was a Western conspiracy to I remove agree. a person yeah. they don't like. Yes. You know, yeah. yes, it might have looked at a revolution at the yeah. beginning, but you cannot compare that to Tunisia. Tunisia, for example, was like very organic. Yeah. Libya wasn't, you know. Maybe the euphoria at the beginning makes it look organic to yes. us. There are some of us who might have fallen for Mm. the way it started mm. and that's what the west is all about yeah. you know they can help you define what the, they think is your revolution mm. and that might be your worst nightmare yeah there has been countries where the west is interested in their president and they make the countries look great but their citizens feel otherwise but you see cnn saying oh you know bbc said, this this is one of the best countries mm. they're making mm. it and they're not making it but they want to shape the narrative in such yeah. a way that it suits yeah. the narrative of uh, the, yeah. our masters, you know, yeah. the Western powers. No, because for me, when I when I think of revolution, I'm, like you said, you you need to replace these guys, right? The the issue, or to I don't know what I use those words, but the issue is that take for example Tinibu. Yes. Even if you were to replace Tinibu, or even if you were to get rid of Tinibu and people like him, the the, the difficulty is that. Tinibu's ideas have seeped into a not not really a large amount, but critical minds of people. Let's for example, Bajamela, Fashola, Ambode, Samwa. Those these guys are proteges of Tinibu. Yeah, so but even but if you, but even you, if you, you you'll be surprised that they're yeah. a minority. Do you know okay. why? Mm. You know, I was around during Abacha's time. Yeah. If you walk the streets of Abuja or parts of Nigeria, you would think that it is true that Nigerians want Abacha yes. to transmute from a military leader. Mm. They had so much control over mm. propaganda. You know, they have control over perception. Yeah. They plan it that way. It's yeah. the same thing with the Tinubus of this. So they plan it that way. They plan it to make you look like Tinubu invented Lagos mm. and then turn Lagos around because there are a few houses in Lekki that looks like streets of Portugal. Mm. That's not, a lot of people are not fooled by that. Yeah. Tinubu is dealing with that today in Lagos. I can guarantee you, forget about all their stupid rallies and all that. More people in Lagos can't stand that Tinubu kind of governance today. Yes. That And you didn't need to send them to university to know that this is not the kind of leader they want. Mm. Yes. So that is why revolutions are important, is that instead of tolerating it and allowing you to develop small angers that you get over with time, it also brings a pool of angry people together yeah. to overthrow such a system so that it's completely removed from the system. It's like this, Chinobu is like a cancer on Nigeria's politics. And like you're right to a large extent, it will take a while to remove all his influences. Yeah. Yeah. But that's if you want to remove it the natural way. If you want to remove it in that revolutionary way, you won't find anybody the next day who will say that they ever knew Chinobu before. Mm. That's what revolutions do. No, I agree because yeah. when I see people make the argument of oh, all these guys need to, I'm like, really, you have to think about it like this. Even if they go, like their proteges are still gonna be around. They'll and be they're around. quite young as well. But Jamila yeah. is quite young, and he's he's even more polished than Tinibu. He speaks yeah, but better. Th he's, that doesn't mean that yeah. they will last forever. No, I agree. Of yeah. course, yeah, of course. So yeah. what do, what do you think of Tinibu generally? What do you think of him? Like, I, you know, I don't have any regard for him. I don't have any regard for Nigerian politicians in general. Atiku included? Of same. course. You know, I I have personally researched, written about these guys. Mm. Bulk of uh, the the reporting that you see outside today, some of them that have been republished or rehashed, yeah. they came from me. I, I was the one who found Tinubu's drug history mm. in Chicago as far back as 2008 mm. and published it. Everything that is being republished and 
redone. It's the same document that mm. I obtained and published two thousand and eight. Mm. Nothing different. It's it's a civil for future yeah. information about his drug history. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so to, if uh, I didn't so anybody that's just hearing about him now yeah. is uh, you know more than <laughs> ten years late. Yeah. Let me let me let me let me draw your attention to Sarah so Reporters. You yeah. you own it, you run it, maybe founded not it, you yeah. founded this, right? Yeah. You're proud of the things that 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 it does. Many some of your detractors will point to the fact that in twenty fifteen Sarah Reporters was used to bringing Buhari. I don't know if you read Okonji Wala's book, the DG of WTO, and mm. in her book she really you could tell that she really had um some issues against you in the sense that in her own words you recorded your her conversation with you over the phone. Um she didn't even know about it you claimed that she was going to be paid in dollars but do you do you think that sahara reporters has become a tool or was used by the elite in 2015 to kick out jonathan no uh, jonathan was the person who kicked himself out you didn't need you didn't need a sahara reporters in 2015 to kick out jonathan you know that so you don't think erufai was, Erufa was using sahara reporters no, or, yeah, so when i did when all the stories i was done about their rufai's uh, corruption where did it come from mm. because uh, people point to the fact that perhaps one of the reasons why you why you immediately turned against buhari was because perhaps we are promised a ministerial position or no people say those things because they know or feel that if they were in my position they mm. would do those kind of things yeah a lot of nigerians don't believe that you can do things atrocistically like you could yeah, actually yeah. Stand genuinely, up yeah, genuinely, and genuinely yeah. stand up against the system, yeah. expose the system. So there are people I've seen me who mm. will say, if I ask our reporters, I'll be living on Banana Island <laughs> because yeah. you know a lot of people are afraid of you. Yeah. So a lot of people don't also believe that I don't have the kind of wealth that people in my mm, position mm. would have, or that I don't have relationship with all these people. Mm. I've been saying it several times. You know, I've never been to a governor's office before except once. Mm. And there are 36 mm. governors now. I've never been to anybody's house, never met the number except on the street in mm. 1999. So, but you know, once you are in the business of, of you know, like offending powerful people, mm. they will also go back and make up powerful stories that are believable about you. Mm. You know, and one of it is that, oh, some, some guy in the UK once set up a website where he said I was given $5 million by Tinumbu to buy a house in California. Mm. And uh, so many people believed him. And when he discovered that he had been able to set people to, he pulled the website because <laughs> he was afraid of libel. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, because he knew he lied, and yeah. um, and I heard it was Reno Mockery who was yeah. behind it. So, people do when you step on the toes of powerful people, you should expect them to yeah. also fight back. Yeah, there was no. I, I have said it. If anybody ever heard or seen any kind of transaction between me or Buhari expose it you know i even still had an encounter with a guy at the uh the actual guild of nigeria event in Benin city mm. last week he came and asked the question you brought buhari to so i offered him five hundred thousand naira to provide any evidence where you saw him in a rally or you had a conversation he went and said he has found it and we couldn't it's the same old story of oh you were jubilating at uh at uh, APC's headquarters and all those kind of uh, uh, you know nonsense that they mm. put together. So, mm. the, with regards to Okonjo Ewela, she's never liked Sarah reporters because Sarah reporters expose all the lies about her being a genius. She, you know, we wrote stories against her and against her modus operandi mm -hmm. so she made up the story that i called her so even if i call you and record it you are a minister you're a public official i mean official mm -hmm. if i record you it's because i want to have evidence that <laughs> you don't come back and say i lied that's <laughs> yeah. how reporters behave yeah but her whole complaint was that i called her on a number that is meant for her family yeah, yeah she uh, said so i yes. said so did you create the number in the first place you bought it off the street people have it so if i'm looking for a number to reach you uh, as uh, if you are a public figure. I look for number everywhere. That's what investigative journalists do, and they call you. The moment they call you and you answer, forget about the rest. So, and the whole thing about that, she was going to be paid dollars 
she, she started out as being paid in dollars, and there was a campaign against her that how can you come to a country to be collecting dollars when other ministers are... You know, that was what Obasanjo brought her to do. Mm. And eventually they dropped the dollar salary for her. She wasn't happy about it. Mm. So she was looking for scapegoats. Mm. And uh, she picked on me. Mm. But when you read the book, you know that it's all false. She made up some stories. But the part that the one that I called her, yes, I did. But the time she claimed I called her was false. Yeah. Because she was claiming that I was calling her not to go and join Jonathan's regime. No, yeah. I wasn't. I called her when she was collecting dollar salary. And yeah. she was she was screaming on the line that this line is meant for my daughter. I think the daughter's name is Onyeye. And I said, Look, forget about that. I have reached you on this number. I want you to clarify this dollar salary for me. Mm. And that's the only time I contacted her. But when she wanted to make up the story, she said, I was one of the people, including Donald Duke, who was calling her not to go and join the Jonathan regime. What is my own business with Jonathan's regime? Jonathan also invited me to join his government. I rejected it. Jonathan invited you? Of course. Okay. Yeah. As a minister or as... I didn't know what it was. They just came one day because they felt like I did them a lot of favor okay. by unveiling and unraveling Yaradua's illness, okay. which was standing between Jonathan and yes. the presidency yeah, at that true. time. Yeah. So... And I told him I wasn't doing anybody a favor. I was doing what my conscience tells me is right for my country. Mm. So I never accepted. And he didn't even send money to the U.S. for someone to come and give to me. And I mentioned, I've mentioned the guy's name several times. And he has never so, denied it. So Jonathan I, sent someone to bring money to the U.S.? For you? Yes. And I never met the guy. The guy's name was his, uh, his Imani Boro. How much? How much? How much? Is I don't. It? Okay. I, I, I didn't see him, so how would I know how much it is? Oh, it's he just said, or God said, we have something for you. To thank you for for all the support. And I said, no, I'm not interested in meeting you. If I meet you, then I would have somehow endorsed your yeah. your your mission. Yeah. yeah. But do you think your inability? I, I won't say inability, but you know, I, there's something I always try to do, and this and that is be very 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 strategic in what I do, like have a sense of strategy in what I do. Do you think that the fact that you have someone like Okonji well, as an enemy, right? I don't think she sees it favor, favor, favorably. Even people like Moya Law as well. I think Moya Law doesn't also like you as well. These are people that I would say most Nigerians respect, right? You don't know who like, Nigerians respect. Okay, okay, let me, yeah. okay, let me say people like so, myself. So, like, so, so, yeah, yeah, that might be you. Yeah. See, my, my job is done mm. when I challenge power. Mm. Whether it's small power or big power. Mm. And I'm not afraid to confront people in authority. The moment yeah. you bring yourself to the public space, yeah and you represent my interest in mm. government, you have also opened yourself to my type of scrutiny yeah. and reporting. Mm. So a lot of Nigerian officials like for them to be reported favorably mm. by the media, uh, or in the eyes of the media. Mm. And when it doesn't happen, they lose their minds. Yeah. So uh, Mogal, I don't think I even did anything on Mogal. He was central bank governor. Uh, Deputy, uh, Deputy Central Bank. Deputy Central yeah. Bank yeah. no, under um, uh, mm. Sanusi. Mm. So I don't remember doing any stories on him. Maybe apart from the fact that when Sanusi was being kicked out, he supported Jonathan because they had promised him they would make him Central Bank, okay. Bank which eventually they didn't do. But that was it. I don't. But would they? Would they all like me? No, I've never set up myself to be liked by people yeah i set myself up to do what i believe is just and fine if i wanted to be liked by people i'll probably mm. be following peter b today so i can gain <laughs> followership <laughs> what's if what's if peter b wins are you, do you have any do you want do, are you gonna work with him no i never i've never set myself up to work with any politician because it's in a, it's not a peter b is this and this is something i try to square when it comes to you i was on i, I was on, on an ig life and i made the point that to be stole your wind and what i meant was this if you can let me finish is uh the ideas that you've been speaking about for the last 30 years apart from the can i say extremes right those are the same ideas that peter be talking about today it's not so talking about, if, if peter be were talking about my ideas yeah uh it will be clear see the danger about peter B is that he's not speaking about anything but people <laughs> believe that they are hearing him yeah. And that was Buhari too in 2015. Yeah. Most of the things that were attributed to Buhari, mm. he never said them. Mm. You know, Buhari was just strategically placing himself to be yeah. listening to 
without talking. Yeah. Peter Obi's handler had reached a point where they don't even put him out on the podium a lot anymore. Yeah. They don't put out his content out because he's not saying anything. Yeah. And they know that. But to deceive the public, mm. they will be screenshotting things they didn't say. Mm. They make up things like Peter Obi doesn't say those things on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. It's a handler or a bunch <laughs> of handlers. And I think uh, Reno Mokri once said he's one handling his Twitter. <laughs> I handle my Twitter handle myself. Anything yeah, you see yeah. on Twitter, I wrote it. Yeah. I wrote it. I'm the person with my password. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what is the problem with Peter. He, he's not saying anything. It, mm. He has no position other than repeating the stories about what he did in Anambra State. Yeah. Or didn't do. And that is why it is possible for it's very easy to get him riled up when they punctured that balloon about Anambra, he's saving money, where he invested the money, yeah. the quality of work he did over there. So yeah. he's not said anything. He didn't take anything away from him. Nothing. I, and I've said this. People want me to like react to, oh, you know, your crowd has gone to... The kind of people that follow me or follow my ideas, I won't say me, so as not to make it look like they are my servants. Mm. They won't go for the kind of superficial campaigning that Peter Obi is doing. Mm. No, they they understand the difference and the difference the differences are clear. I've only met Peter Obi on this campaign trail once at ICANN event. Yeah, so and when that event was over, it was clear between him and I who was clear headed about <laughs> the future of Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. And I don't I think ever since then there's been this uh, coalition avoidance mm. that's been going on. I went to Calabar a few we just came back from Calabar yesterday, the day before. We were supposed to appear at the same podium. They lied to me that he was not coming. <laughs> when I went and waited for, they said the event was happening at 4 p.m. By the time I came back, he had come and left. Oh. They, they structured it that way such that we don't yeah, share yeah. the same podium because yeah. they know whose ideas are mm. very clear and can penetrate yeah better because he doesn't speak to anything and i'm saying this categorically is is the truth and those who are managing him or his handlers they know this mm. they know what they are doing they just want to impose on nigeria like their own candidate yeah and their belief is that well the others have done it it's our turn but i don't believe in turn by turn yeah. kind of democracy yeah. how, how how convinced are you about victory next come february 2023 you know for me what is victory mm. is taking this country out of the woods mm. not it's not going to be an electoral victory alone mm. it's a victory that is convincingly going to pull nigeria out of the condition that it is today yeah. uh and that victory is not limited to oh i've won because I understand the word historically to know that even in historical conditions, mm. you could have a victory that is not victory. Of course, yes. yes. If the objective conditions of the people yeah. don't change. Yeah. So, but I mean it to win, and that's what is that's it's not it's not all that matters. A lot more things matter to me than just winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanna, I wanna talk to you about because I saw a video about like a video where you were talking about capitalism and socialism. Yeah. I struggle to understand where you stood on the issue of capitalism or socialism. So I want, I want to delve into that topic with you. Do you see yourself as a capitalist or as a socialist? No, I don't see myself as a capitalist. Why? Um, I suck at it. Really? <laughs> if I was a capitalist, I would have made a lot of money. What, Re yeah. what I found that Sarah reporters would have gone straight for making money. Yeah. And I would probably own an island and be living on it by now. Yeah. Uh, but for me, socialism is the right way to go. Really? Yes. And it is to the extent that I believe in the dynamism of it. I am like in favor of the social democrats of the Nordic states, for instance, Norway, Denmark, yeah. and the rest of them. who are practicing, you know, uh, socialism. Yeah. They practice socialism. Everything in their country belongs to their people. Mm. The leaders keep it uh, hold it for the people. There is free education in those countries, yeah. free health care, you know. Even the, their prisons are better than our houses. Of course, here. Yeah. Yes. So, so that Nordic type of socialism, where you sharply invest 
in your people mm. to the extent that they can compete with socialist, I mean, yeah. capitalist states. I also have st understudied the U.S. system and know that it doesn't. It's not a strictly capitalistic system as people want you to believe, mm. because the social uh, inputs, the mm. socialism inputs of even the U.S. state, yeah. is is significant in the sense that the poor is not just left at the mercy of, you know, uh, weather and climate. That's the uh, the geographical way to put it. The U.S. as capitalist, if I want to, as if I want to sound, is going to help people pay their school loans. Yeah, it's going to provide some kind of medical situation. I mean, policy for people who don't earn a certain amount of money mm. to have free healthcare. People who cannot feed themselves have uh, food stamps. Mm. You know, uh, people who can't take care of themselves during. COVID era yeah. are supported. I was based in Nigeria throughout COVID. Mm. I got a call from my accountant to clear a backlog of money sent by the US to my account. I'm not even a US citizen, I'm just a green card holder. Yeah. And the money is uh, almost $3,000. Meanwhile, while I was here during COVID, it was the time they broke my nose, mm. <laughs> the police. I never got anything. I was just restricted here. They were monitoring me. They were attacking me on a yeah, daily basis. Yeah. But the country whose government I have no allegiance to because I'm not a citizen was concerned about my well-being. Mm. So, so when you talk about socialism, yeah. the U.S. is a mixture of both capitalist states yeah. and that has social socialism input. Yeah. Otherwise, the U.S. state would have exploded if the poor was allowed to just if the rich was allowed to ride rough shoes uh, on the on the on the poor but my idea of nigeria is not u.s kind of capitalism i've explained to you mm. where i drive inspiration so yeah i'm on the socialist side of the spectrum yeah. definitely I, I kind of disagree with you not even kind of because when i when you think of socialism you think of the the evils of whether it's leninism or, St or Stalin or Marxism or where you think of the fact that millions were killed yeah. to try to actualize this idea of maybe, socialism. Maybe you're looking at more you know, at communism, you know. No, communism is, is the end goal. Yeah, no. But So, so yeah. a, a socialist state. Yeah. Mm, Which is what you want, right? Yes. It's like Brazil after that. But that's, that's not really that's not really socialist state. No, it's, no. it is. It is. I think it's a Lula, question. Yeah. Lula. Yeah, the Silva. Know, yes, the yeah. Silva just won. Yeah. The reason he won was because he practiced almost strictly socialism. You know? No, no. No, no. no. Okay. So, you, this, these things evolve. They are dynamic. Yeah. You know? so that's why there's Nordic socialism, which I, I, I was breaking yeah. it down to you yeah. so that you can have an, a, a peep into yeah, my yeah. kind of socialism like, yeah. where people get free education, free health care. Yeah. You know, resources belong to the people, not a few. Yeah, I'm not the capitalism they are practicing in Nigeria is cannibalism. Mm. Yeah, you know, which is that five people have more money than 130 million people. Yeah, a capitalism that pushed 130 million citizens into extreme poverty mm. is not the one I want to carry on mm. with. And there are ample examples elsewhere, strategies elsewhere that I have explained to you. The one that is really killing people now mm. in our country is the capitalism of Nigeria mm, today. Mm. Because those 130 million people are people without jobs, yeah. without health insurance, uh, without possibilities of sending their children to school, yeah. 20 million kids out of school, mm. the ones that close down university, mm. the ones that uh, can't refine his oil, you know, and several other evils, because yeah. you mentioned evil. Yeah. Whatever is being practiced here in Nigeria today is called socialism. Yeah. I mean, it's capitalism. No, not you really. Not no, really. it is. I I, this is so where Nigeria I disagree. Nigeria is a capitalist right? state. No, it's, it's yeah. not. It's not. What is it? You know why I say Nigeria, Nigeria, is, Nigeria is not? No, tell me. Most what things, it? most things in Nigeria are being controlled by the government. No, so what's that? That's that's socialism. No, it's not. No, but capitalism is where it's entrepreneurs. No, people like, for example, what capitalism is is, yeah. that, is the fact that you began to hire reporters. That's capitalism. Yeah, it's not. You have an idea in your room. I think mm. that's what you said in the room. In your but room I don't with control. I don't control. You see, 
I don't. I mean, con- we, can, we can check the dictionary definition. No, no. Capitalism it's, really I'm is not, I'm not, I'm, government I'm, control. I'm, it's, it's, it's not. If if, if no, 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 capitalism, socialism. That's yeah. what socialism so means. If government, government control. control is yeah. socialism. Yeah. Then the US would be a perfect example of a socialist. State. No, no, really. Because, US, because Apple, the, Amazon. No, no. Um, because the government, the government work. controls everything in the US. No, not really. Including when the government of the US wants to break up Amazon, yeah. he will go after it and break it yeah, up. But, but, but because uh, yeah. there is state control over everything. At, no, no, you know, yeah. Including your house, okay. the water you drink, let's, electric. It's let's controlled by let's the take US an, state. Let's take an so, example, right? So if, st- yeah. if, the, if the narrow definition of socialism is just state yeah. control, no, 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 not, then the US I'm, should be number one or your, yeah. or your, or your maybe we, maybe we need to defi- Maybe we need to check yeah. what Oxford defines that. But my point is that yeah. Look at, for example, Nigeria, right? Yes. The Nigerian government controls the airports in Nigeria. The U.S. We government talk- does too. Yeah, but in in U.S. you have the fact that in America and, and UK, you know what, what, what happened? You know what? You, Ameri- know, why. you know what? Let me explain yeah. to you. Yeah. There was a time one of these Arab states wanted to buy yeah. the U.S. ports. Yeah. And, the, and control the U.S. ports in in national New York security area. reasons. Yes. It's yeah. not national. It's because so no matter how they hide. Yeah. What they are telling you is that when it comes to our own resources, yeah. our national affairs, yeah. we control stuff. Oh, that's different. But no, that's it's different. not different. What I mean is, no, you my know, point is... To the point that the yeah. U.S. is a police state, for that matter, you understand, in the sense that the, the control, the U.S. is a control freak when it comes to, when, yeah, when it comes to regulation. I think for me, one of the, so, one of the things I point So you to, cannot call yeah. Nigeria a socialist state, you yeah. cannot call U.S. a socialist state. Yeah. I think it's what is driving the economy. Yeah, you know, if it's the markets that drive the economy, that's capitalism. Drive, yes. Yeah. So, I am telling you yeah. that if that's the case, then five people should not have been richer than one hundred. But that's not what that's that's my point. But that's my point. Nigeria. If the markets are driving, the, it's the market. No, the it's markets are not in Nigeria. No, no the markets are no, driving no. everything. No, not yeah, in Nigeria. You understand? Not, yeah, not so in Nigeria. The markets are driving everything because it is the private sector. You understand? Okay. That is the most important thing to the to the Nigerian government, and this thing came by way of the economic policies that we undertook since the eighties. Yeah, the structural adjustment program. Yes, we the are World tied Bank. to yes. the World Bank. We yes. are tied to the IMF policies. Yes. That hasn't changed, mm. and they are not. They are here to do the bidding of capitalism. They turn the state and call it a capitalist state. Maybe I would agree with you mm. if you said to me, "I don't know how to define Nigeria." <laughs> Maybe that's safer, but for you to say that Nigeria is a socialist state, no, because no. Whenever, whenever, whenever I look at Nigeria, I look at the fact that the government just the let's government agree that we are confused about where Nigeria. No, I think it's a question of nomenclature, right? I think yeah. that's I think but the, the nomenclature, nomenclature, even the proper nomenclature yeah. today, yeah, is capital. Nigeria is a capitalist state. No, I, no, I really yeah. dis- I disagree with no, you in the I, sense that whenever I look at Nigeria, like mm. I see a government that is stifling entrepreneurship. There's no. I see a government no, that there's no in agreement to you, right? There's they no want, entrepreneurship. Here exactly, that is not free. You understand what yeah. you might argue mm. is that maybe they adopted a method, you know, and they didn't buy the spare parts mm. for it, so yeah, and then it becomes confusing to them. Yeah, but the moment you accept HOHA, the structural adjustment program, and policies of the mm. World Bank and the IMF. The Bretton Woods organizations and they have their representation, they dictate your mm. economy, they help you get yeah. loans and all yeah. that. You are practicing what they preach and what no, they want. Well, yeah. So yeah. it's a socialist state yeah. difference in that regard. What I'm saying is that if you want to call control, government control, mm. Uh, if, you, if that's your definition of socialism, then you better go and choose the okay, U.S. Yeah, I think for me, let's, as number let's, one let's state, agree because they're a control yeah. freak when yeah. it comes to yeah. how the U.S. even controls inflation. They just passed a law known yeah. as the Inflation, inflation Reduction Act. Yeah. Yeah. If they want to be a capitalist state, yeah. they would allow the market forces to be running no, I think that's I think that's been a bit academic in the sense it's, that you cannot have Socialism Ish, and capitalism have, is also very academic. Yeah, you know, you cannot have anyone as a clay cut. You're always going to have a combination of both. Like you said, a hybrid, right? Yeah. You're always going to have a hybrid So, of so both. that's why I'm telling you but, that I'm dynamic. I'm on the dynamic side of socialism yeah. in a sense that, you know, it's, it's not a, a private sector-driven economy. Yeah. But it's an economy that allows private participation. Yeah. That's, 
that's maybe the easier way to that, no on that we yeah, can yeah, agree yeah. because for me i think i think what defines your, your argument or what i agree on is the fact that nordic nordic type is the best type yeah the one practiced by norway and other Scandin- Scandin- yeah. scandinavian yeah. countries that's the best type of Socialism. That we. <laughs> no, the issue. The issue. I don't, the, the reason why I don't like that word is when you think of the ills or the people that die. No, because you cause. you are defining it. You're, you are defining it yeah. one way. Yeah. And the one way you are defining it is like you're looking at this. You know, uh, yeah. the socialism of yeah the Soviet Union and yeah. China. And, yeah, yeah. And how many people died? But, but, but that worked. You have also yeah. you yeah. also forgotten that yeah. the capitalist system yeah. probably killed more people because don't, these are the same people that also dropped a you know a, a, an atomic bomb. Yeah, Hiroshima, and Nagasaki. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and have. Tell me how many socialist states have but, gone to but, war yeah. more than America. Yeah. Well, okay. How many? How that many? How is many do you know how many people that Amazon employs? I, Walmart, uh, yeah. for example. I don't know. I mean, look I at what know. look at what Flutter Wave is doing in Nigeria. Yes. These I are don't know. these are ideas of entrepreneurs uh, yes. that have changed. So, so, you how many people do you know that uh, Flutter Wave is employed? In Nigeria? I don't know. About, I don't know about. I don't know. Exactly. The Do your research notes. first yeah. before you say it in public. No, but my point. No, my because point. they are not. They are not even yeah. look. Yeah. I, I I've been in the tech sector. Yeah. On a low. Yeah. Level yeah. Because I, you know, I'm not coding. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. But, but there's a way tech is promoted. Too, yeah. That makes it sound like oh, you know, it's it's governs everything. Yeah. I'm a tech enthusiast. You know. Yeah. Like I believe that the future relies on technology. Yeah. But I also know that the future of technology is being shaped mm. by political forces as well. Yes, yeah, true. You understand? Yeah, yeah. For instance, you know, the the wage for Amazon workers in the US is different from their wage elsewhere. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Because the goal is to make profit. Yeah. The goal is not to change the world. Yeah. My goal is to change my world. And this is where this is where I agree with you that there should be an intersection between the government and the and, and private in the, in the sense yeah. that, for example, in America, the reason why the rates are higher is because the government determines what the rate exactly. is. Exactly. Why, so not, say, why example, don't the government allow apply, apply the same in Nigeria if you are president, yeah. right? You will be able to determine and say to Amazon or Flutterwave or any other mm-hmm. entrepreneur, if you're going to do this, this is how much you should pay your, your, your employees. Exactly. So that's, so, so that's why I'm telling you that that is socialism right there is that you think yeah. about the welfare and well-being of your citizens yeah. as your top priority yeah. and resources that come to your country as their own yeah. that is jointly owned not yeah. owned by a few people yeah. whatever the US cannot get from Amazon by controlling them and they regulate them a lot mm. they do by way of taxes yeah, yeah. they ensure that Amazon doesn't pay slave wages to yes, their citizens. Of course, yeah. Of course. The, you know, in relation to the same thing with Europe. Europe is even like more stringent. Yeah. Yeah. They do it they you know they Climate tell them tax, yeah, they and all do all that. kinds of yeah, things to yeah. them. They find them over yeah, the trust. Yeah. India is doing the same thing with them now yeah. because they need a bigger part of the pile to go to their citizens. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree on that. And that's, that's yeah. the goal of yes. my and this is, kind of but that's, that's why I said maybe yeah, it's a it's question not, of nomenclature. It's not, it's not a socialism yeah. of extermination no, of, of course. You can't, opponents you, you, of the government. Yeah, you can't have entrepreneurs yeah. running yeah. rushed over the economy. You need the government yeah, so overseeing. So you have to separate socialism from fascism. Of course. Yes. Of course, yes. Uh, because there are a lot of fascist social states. I mean, yes. capitalist states too. Yes, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I, for me, my, I agree, yeah. my, my, my point, and this is where we agree on, is that yes, you have entrepreneurs but you need a capable government you overseeing. Need, you need more government. Than, I mean, why are we spending billions to elect a person in 2023? It's mm. because government is more important but that's, than... that's socialism. Is, yeah, no. So government, the U.S. doesn't it, spend money but this on... Is, the, but this is where Republicans differ yeah. with Democrats in America. Yeah. Republicans not, want le- less government, Democrats want more government. No, no. It's, the Republicans tell you they want less government. But okay. it has been shown that each time they get into power, it's more, they yeah, get more, yeah. they put in more people. Yeah, but that's the yes. government gets bigger and bigger because okay. of the defense industry. Yeah, you know, and the fact that they're always hungry for war. That's a different bargain. Yeah, that's yeah, a, we so can we can be on that topic yeah, for hours. Yeah, yes. the military military industrial complex and yeah. all of that. Let me let me go to the topic of um, evolution now, and you know, I think people 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 argue that evolution now was kind of like a prelude to answers. Do you think that that played that played the role in the answers 
process. Oh, I definitely so. think that after revolution now, a lot of people became clearer that mm. government could be confronted. I said, I think there was this palpable fear that the Buhari regime had gone fascist mm. and it was uh, people were afraid of the regime. Mm. So revolution now came and exposed the underbelly of the government that government mm. could be confronted, especially for the new generation of activists in Nigeria and, and yeah. I must give them thumbs up for that. Yeah. Uh, but again, NSAS fell short of what he could have achieved mm. because he did not have revolutionary leadership okay yes yeah yes yeah. and uh because we saw it firsthand i was the one who started NSAS in abuja by going to the headquarters of the police and i was the one who invited a lot of the people who participated in SARS privately and one of the first earlier tweets about NSAS came from me and i can name all of them you know Faz, reno you know I was on the phone with Renu, telling her how to... Renu Mokri? No, Renu Oduala, the okay. young lady. Who okay, okay, okay. No, I was the person who brought Deji and yeah. Aisha yeah. to the police headquarters. I invited them personally, so let's mm. start this. And then it caught fire, you know, which is good. Mm. But again, as it is natural of human beings, the moment it became popular, a set of young elites... <laughs> said it was their project yeah, and yeah. were controlling things and since unfortunately they had money you know to buy food and all of that which was not a bad idea because it sustained the momentum but the critical junction for NSAS to become a revolution was the day after the shooting at Lekki if that leadership was in control and people had come out the next day with so much anger and the whole world keeping an eye on Nigeria, we would not be having this conversation. But everybody was more about taking the glory, you know. Yeah, this uh -huh. is... This everybody is, uh, wanted to be the captain on CNN. You know, they were already doing documentaries about a struggle that has not even started. So, and mm. I hope we learn from that in the future. Yeah, this is, this is, this is the issue, right? Because the lack of leadership we saw around NSAS, and this is what I was telling my friends, that if you had leaders around NSAS movements, they would have come up with, okay, what do we really want to achieve? Yes. There has to be an end goal. goal. We can't yeah. just it's be protesting or... The, all those you know, ideas of when the state was... One of the issues that could have been resolved earlier is that is to envisage state response. Exactly, yeah. Use of, how use to of, overcome yeah, it. Yeah, yes. I, use of I knew that the state yeah. would come after. Yes, agent provocateurs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They were using the jet provocateurs. Yeah. And when that didn't work, they had to move in. Of course. So at the point at which they moved in, had there been strong leadership yeah. across the country? Yeah. yeah. It's to take it a notch higher. And the, uh, October 20th, mm. the night of October 20th, was the weakest day of the Nigerian state because it had already killed innocent people. So, but they woke up and they must have been surprised that by 21st, nobody was left. Yeah, yeah, you need- Everybody you need had to. left. Yeah. You know, people are coward, people were, uh, had crossed the border, people, others had started denouncing mm. even in SARS. And uh, that was a yeah. fundamental flaw of yeah. answers. Yeah, I think for me, like you, you need people that, like you said, that can that can see. And when you've seen, well, you, you, yeah, you're, you're read on the political yeah. movements, yeah. you can see that this is how the government will respond. Yeah. Okay, how do we count out the government the response? response? Yes. But what do you say to your people, people that say that you try to hijack the movements? No, but that's where the argument. That's yeah. that's where the blackmail came from. Yeah. That, uh, because I wasn't. You see, they were holding meetings mm. with government. Um, representatives on that ground. Okay, you mean people like who? who like who? <laughs> they were holding meetings with Dangote, Tony Alumelu. Who, who and who were holding? I think all of the all of the major NSAS people. Oh, really? We were holding yeah, they were holding Zoom meetings. Okay, I, I think Aisha was also ah, part of okay. it. Okay, and I had warned against it and talked about it that I think this is going to compromise okay. the NSAS movement, and that's where they focused on me because what they tried to do, which was the worst mistake, mm. was that. The government knew that NSAS was going to be big, and they started trying to appoint leader for the NSAS, people they mm. could talk to. You know, first they started with, uh, what was this guy called? Um, 
this musician Faz. Uh, not Faz. Uh, Naramali. Oh, Naramali. So yeah. they wanted to impose Naramali on the answers. The the police was holding Zoom meetings with him on Instagram. They thought it was a joke. Mm. When well, they discovered that Naramali had no control over what was going on, they abandoned Naramali. Went for the video. You know, mm. they, because they kept trying to impose, yeah. you know, faces that they thought had mm. social control mm, mm. over. But those guys didn't control the streets. Mm. So they went to the video. The video came when they brought him to the police headquarters. He denounced his entire actions the day before. So because he knew the streets wasn't listening to these guys, they now started going after those they suspected yeah. might be difficult to talk to, like me. Because I wouldn't have accepted any of those meetings that the Lumelu and Tango they were having. There were screenshots. You can do the research of their Zoom meetings mm. with the the people they chose that they f- thought were reasonable. Mm-hmm. And then the NSAS guys were putting demands in front of the government. But that was not the demand of the, the street wanted the system to collapse. That was the feeling of the street. All those five plus five or five over five demands. They, they misread the public. The public was tired with the government. It was a political uprising. It wasn't about NSAS. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about ending police brutality alone. It mm-hmm. was to end the government's instrumentality of oppression. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people, Buhari represented that. And they wanted, and Buhari even said later that he was told by security agents yeah. that these young people <laughs> were walking to his living room yeah, and yeah. driving him away. Yeah. So, the, there was fear mm. on the side of the government. But the government was also able to manipulate mm. some of the organizers to say, yeah. look, these guys are going to turn this, don't let Shore be in charge of this, yeah. you know, because he will turn it into a revolution. My crime, according to some of those organizers, mm. was that I will turn this into a revolution and they were in line. Mm. <laughs> that was the direction that the NSAS movement needed to go. Mm. Otherwise, you would need NSAS too. Mm. And that is why they are trying to make the Peter Abib movement look like an NSAS movement, which is not. It's another mistake. Yeah, yeah. You know, because this is appropriation of the struggle of a generality of the people yeah. for selfish political reasons. Yeah. yeah. And that is why, you know, there will be a lot of gnashing of teeth again very soon. <sighs> Yeah, let me. What do you think of Lumelu? You mentioned him. What do you think of him? Oh, he's a businessman. Oh, okay. Yeah. How about Dangote? What, do you, what are your thoughts? That's, these are the capitalist niggas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you see them in any kind of light? I mean, Dangote is the largest. Em- he, la- he, yeah, he is the largest employer in Nigeria, it's right? Not. He's not. The, the federal is government is the largest okay, employer. Take the federal government away. Like, private, largest private. Employer, that's what I mean. We'll just check your records. Probably pri- not. Private. Probably not. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have the figures, but so you don't. Look, how do you? How do you see him? Like, I mean, look at what he's, he's in Lagos. The it, they are part of the economic vultures feasting on Nigeria. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe these guys are just. If Dangote gets, if a goat mm. gets what Dangote gets, mm. they will be a billionaire in Nigeria. Waivers. This this guy has his own special exchange rates. Of the dollar, so if, for instance, Dangote mm. can get the dollar one ninety, or say two hundred, because he has his own special rate to build a refinery, and he can sell it at seven hundred. Why would he want to build a refinery, or why would he want to complete the refinery? Because you have already made more profit just flipping dollar in a BDC than building a refinery. If you build yeah. a refinery. Before you can catch up with, before you can break even, you probably have to do another 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already around 70 years old. Yeah. You had 10 years to his life, and he won't enjoy the money as much as he would love to. Yeah. So the privileges that he's enjoying, including an investment of $2.5 billion by Nigerian government, because yeah. he's struggling to finish the refinery. Yeah. This is what we call socialism for the rich. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I see where you're going to because I know yeah. I think I read um, what's his name Sanusi talked about this flipping dollars and it was amazing to me because the fact that someone can flip the race and make the amount of money that billions of naira just by flipping is In something. A day, yeah, you can make more money flipping it's, dollars. Yeah, it's something. Than ten years of yeah. a refinery that would be breaking yeah. down and needs maintenance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, all that. So. Yeah. That is the practice of the Nigerian yeah. state, yeah. Uh, you know, political space or financial yeah. or economic space. 
that we see mm. and say to our people, take back your country. I yeah. Mean, Take it back. Yeah. So let's let's. I want to. I want to. Let's talk about. We're in this building, right? And I mean, when, when we were coming up the stairs, we talked about the fact that you had two churches in this building. What do you think? What are your thoughts on? What are your thoughts on God? And what are your thoughts on religion? You see, I generally don't talk about religion because if you have a majority of people mm. like we have in Nigeria who are religious, mm. they take offense very easily when you discuss mm. that particular flaw. You understand? Mm. So, for instance, I am a non-religious person. You don't believe in God? I don't believe in religion. I don't believe in organized religion. No, no, no forget about religion, you know? but do you believe that they No, God, no, the way God is projected in... Not the Nigerian... Not no, the Nigerian... The way God is yeah. projected by man yeah. is in the form of a religion. You know, yeah. they, they erect a shrine and they want people to go and bow or kneel yeah. Yeah. before humans who are the curators. Yeah. So, my own idea of God is that God couldn't have been cheap enough to allow men, uh, men of God, to handle his affairs or her affairs. Mm. So I, I'm more of a spiritual person, you know. Mm. When I say spiritual is that I believe that somehow the people have connections, mm. you know, that we don't see. Mm. Either when they sleep or where they wake, where they go, where their destinies are directed. Mm. I believe that there is something a little bit more yeah. beyond the surface. Yeah. But I don't answer to how men describe it. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. but I don't I don't make religious arguments because how do you argue with people who already made up their mind that they, they can, you can't question there is no question allowed so, when it comes to the issue of religion. Yeah. Okay, let me let me put it this way, right? But I believe it's, that yeah. if religion were to be pure, you know, states will have no hand in it. No, I agree on that. Yeah. I think I think for me it's a bit nuanced in the sense that the you fact know, that yeah people have control over religion yeah. also even defeats the essence of the emergence of Christ, for instance. Yeah, because um, the Jews were expecting Jesus Christ to come from the home of the king, mm. and for him to have come through a carpenter mm. is why some of them are still expecting their savior mm. today. Mm. But it's it's not my job. To tell people what to believe. Yeah. My job here on earth is to make life easy for those who might believe in God and who may not. Yeah. Yeah. I want to touch on your manifesto. Yeah. Powerful manifesto, really. Um I, I read it, did some something about it. Your I think I would be safe in saying that your manifesto argues for spending. So five hundred billion dollars in spending and it goes to the argument of this argument of saving versus spending. Yeah. I believe that to, to resolve this puzzle called Nigeria, we need to spend our way out of it. Not spend frivolously on yeah. convoy and nonsense, uh -huh. but spend on, like, I think the, yours was Spicer Heat. You listed out so many great ideas national security, promoting mm. sustainable growth. You know, on this issue of spending and on this issue of um, man, your manifesto, what's what do you what do you want what do you want to resolve about this in this how how would you save nigeria from where she's going to yeah so nigeria has been spending on irrelevance mm. or irrelevances nigeria has been a nation that has been spending both what it has and what it doesn't have mm. but the question is what do we spend on rubbish mm. so i want to spend on valuable things mm. i want to spend on housing mm. to the point that an average nigerian can have a place they call their home mm. i want to spend on education enough such that one two three ten nigerians could one day mm. invent something that will take this country out of poverty mm. or solve man's problem mm. both at home and beyond mm. i want to spend on infrastructure yeah in such a way that we can have turnovers mm. that would make those become profitable not in the sense of capitalist profit mm. but in terms of valuable value-added profit to the people mm. you know I want to spend on health so that people don't die young. Mm. And the longer they live, the wealthier the nation becomes. Yes, of you course, yeah. So I want to spend on technology 
such that this becomes a technological hub mm. of the African continent, and as a result, bring about brain power that can solve other problems that are bedeviling mm. us and our African. And I'm, I'm also a Pan Africanist, by the way, mm. and I believe that until Nigeria gets it right, Africa will not get it right. Mm. So, all this spending amounts to a drop in the bucket mm. compared to the value it will add to the humanity here. Yeah. It's just to make it clear that I have plans to invest in all this and that the right investment and mm. the right time for investment would bring about value to our lives and the system and our nation mm. that we be small compared to what the outcomes will be in the future. I'm more interested in sustainability, as we've I've yeah, told you, yeah. that if you build houses, great houses, they only appreciate in value. Of course. But if you let your elites use money made for housing to buy jets, mm. the day you deliver the jet to them, the value starts depreciating. If you mm. buy a brand new car today, you drive it back to the automat, mm. the value has depreciated. Of but course, if you build yeah. a new house yeah. today, in one year time, the value has appreciated. So I want yeah. to invest in things that have value, you know, and that adds value uh, and create a value chain that can then multiply. Uh, I want to invest in minimum wages that are living wages mm. so that people in this country can find meaning in life mm. uh, and create just a fantastic space for development, peace, and progress. Because without this investment, peace will elude you, progress will elude you. And you would have no reason to be happy. But if you keep the same amount of money in the hands of the people who fritter them away, they'll mm. spend five hundred billion dollars yeah. buying garbage instead of investing in the real sector. Yeah. No, I agree with everything. It was a powerful manifest and yeah. and I hope people really read it and get to see your your how you want to really change Nigeria and transform this country. However, for you to get there you need to I mean, you just said you were in Calabar. How, 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 how do you intend to raise money to win? You know, you need money to win an election. You know, you know I, it's, it's very expensive. Is there it, like, it is. do you have, do you have um, what do they call it? Um, the war um, chest. <laughs> no, no, yeah, a war chest or like a GoFundMe page. Uh, how, how no, would, I, I, you yeah. know. Let's say, for example, there's a guy in Anambra State, right? He loves to worry. He wants to vote support. Yeah. How, how would he contribute to your campaign? No, no, we have a campaign account. Okay. And we've been crowdfunding. Okay. Uh, I started even the concept of crowdfunding since 2019, mm. 2018, 2019. And in 2018 and 2019, I raised 200, almost 200 million naira. Wow. Yeah, wow. from crowdfunding. Wow. Uh, but we also then opened a GoFundMe account. Okay. But this time, there is a whole talk about foreign money mm. in local elections, and mm. we're trying to be careful. Mm. And also because of the tax codes of yeah. GoFundMe, it, it, since it goes into a, a you know, it's a there's a private tax liability to it because it's considered as income in the U.S. Yeah. So, and since I'm based in Nigeria, I have a bank account with Zenin Bank that is primarily meant for my presidential. So that's the one that people can... Yes. So that people works. have been donating. Okay. And I make available to people monthly okay. reports of how much we generate. Yeah, that's great. And yeah. how, much, uh, how much we spend, you know, income and expenditure. Yeah, can we get that just so we put in the link? So that yeah, can, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it, it's a Zenin yeah. Bank account, 10060238711. Okay. I can remember... S say it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, say it again, it's yeah. 1002... Mm. I'm sorry, 1006... Mm. 02 I will send you okay. uh, the account. So, and there's, there's yeah. now, we just last week opened a, uh, a domiciliary account component okay. where people can deposit foreign yeah. components. Excellent. But Excellent. we intend yeah. to account for every dime yeah. we raise. Uh, and uh, that's just how we want to show leadership. Yeah. No, that's, as, we, uh, so as we're getting to the end, I just want to ask you, you know, one of the things that, that I noticed in your message compared to Peter B's message is that uh, Peter B's message is a bit forward-looking. And I don't know how you would take this in the sense that, for example, Peter B says he won't go after people that have looted the economy. Mm. I have some issues with that. So, for example, if someone like Alison Madwek and Akron is stole $3 billion, I'm mm. sorry, you have to go after them to get that money back, right? Yeah. 
but you are like you're gonna go after those guys he's like oh is the past is the past no no you see yeah this is where i keep telling you that there's no message there mm. there is no country in the world mm. that isn't that doesn't go after its looted properties mm. you can't survive it has two dimensions to it mm. it is it helps to remind those who are current looters that one day they will pay for their atrocities. Mm. Secondly, it is part of your history that mm. needs to be corrected. Those who don't investigate their past will get the future wrong. Mm. Look at Benin City. Do you know how long ago they looted yeah. the artifacts? Yeah, they're now turning it back. They're yeah. turning it back, yeah. and we're celebrating it. Yeah, yeah. Look at Abacha. How long ago did he steal? Up to, up to last week. Up to last week, the guy is still sending us money into <laughs> from the, our ATM. From the, from the grave. Yeah, from the grave. <laughs> so why is it that we accept Abacha's money? Mm. Some 20 something years after he died. Mm. And we are saying in 2022 Umba, that it's yeah. all right for those who have stolen. They can walk away. Mm. Do you know how dangerous it is for people to take away your wealth? Mm. And then... If they like, they can come in and use it to destabilize your country, yeah. you know, because you may not, the new regime may not suit their own agenda for further stealing mm -hmm. and looting. So I'm shocked that anybody says, oh, I'm going to let every thief work. Yeah. Even, I'm sure if somebody stole his car seven <laughs> years ago, he would like to get it back. Yeah. You see, some guy stole my father's generator <laughs> <laughs> when I was in primary school. Yeah, yeah. We got it back when we were in secondary school, <laughs> seven years after. We were yeah. happier yeah, that yeah. we retrieved the loot yeah, yeah. than buying a new generator yeah, because yeah. we have a history with the generator. Yeah, I agree. And when yeah. it came, I knew where I went to look first yes. to be sure that it was our own. Yes, and I said, yeah. this is our generator. Yeah. So the Jews mm. are still recovering pen knives yeah. from germans yeah yeah they are recovering shoes mm -hmm. socks if they can find it mm -hmm. any interesting thing of value yeah that they lost during yeah. the second world war yeah they are still yeah. recovering it yeah. they are still punishing yeah even people who were opening gates yeah. in the concentration camps yeah and you are saying to me that the mm. guys who carried out those kind of atrocities here mm. should be left to go and live in luxury why did citizens they deprived of this opportunity should continue to wallow in poverty? Mm. That is nonsensical. No, I agree. Yeah. I, what do you think of Buhari? What do you think of what do you think of Buhari? Buhari is an accident of history. And I have predicted that he will end up in the dustbin of history as well. I agree. Yeah. So, you know, ja, you've you've been through a lot. I, I began this podcast by talking about the fact that you hadn't seen your you've not seen your wife and kids in years um what keeps you going you know what's when you wake so, up in the morning you you you're you're in the struggle you're, you're in Calabala, you're all over the place what keeps what, what motivates you what keeps you going you know i i just have a very straight mind mm. about what is just and right mm. and what is fair mm. and as long as i'm able to do that nothing stops me yeah and i'm a little bit my attitude towards life is a little bit different from others i take mm. one day at a time and i do not calculate to my life mm. the fact that life could end because for me if it ends it ends there and you have no control over that i think what makes a lot of people fearful of authorities mm. is death you know i'm not worried about death because I believe that it's, it will eventually become the greatest relief of all pains. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's the end of yes, it all, yeah. good and bad. Of course. Yeah. Yes. So I just want to use my life here mm -hmm. to make all the difference I can yeah. while I'm still here. And I'm always feeling like we have no time, you know. And Nigeria itself, I believe, is running out of time. If the right intervention don't happen as soon as we expected yeah growing up who was who or not just was but who is your role model oh man muhammad ali really? <laughs> nice, nice. yes i yeah I, you know i had this I, I, do you, you box know. no i don't okay. but i just like the fact that 
he will go into the boxing ring. Yeah. Whether he's defeated <laughs> or he wins, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. the same. Yeah, of course. Uh, yes. But on the political side, I think, you know, I lean towards Obafemi Awolowo because he okay. gave me free education. Okay. Uh, when I was growing up. Yeah. You know, and then the rest is what everybody has. You know, uh, Mandela, Martha King. One of the first places I went when I arrived in the US was Birmingham, Martha Luther King's home. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I also always understand that yeah. uh, you know I don't want to burden people with choosing me as a hero. You know, I, no, you are to many people. Yeah. You are to I just, people, I just, yeah. I just live my life as uh, yeah. I believe is best, mm. and it's the reason I don't go for awards. You know, yeah. nobody, nobody can give me an award and find me collecting it, except if I'm trapped in a place and they quickly prepare and I'm trying to be like respectful yeah because you know i just feel like there's so many vanities and vague yeah, things yeah. that defines our life that shouldn't be yeah. anyways and i believe that you know heaven is here uh but we're making a mess of it according to one guru like that who, yeah who, who, who yeah yeah i think that. i saw that someone yeah. i can't pronounce his name it's a long yeah. name but it's, i saw that it's, video it's, it's, it's a powerful yeah, it's, it's a powerful a, video it's a very powerful yeah one. I, I, I align with him yeah how yeah. how about abiola because i know that that video i saw was very i mean it was something that when i saw you stood behind yeah. um, um, abiola he must be a, he must have been a someone that you look well, up to you as know well. my, my attitude towards abiola is uh, a little bit conflicted mm. because I'm one of the people who follow Fela Nicola Pokuti. Yeah. By the way, he's one of my heroes. Yeah. <laughs> and I totally believe his position on Abiola and Obasanjo and the ITT. Okay. But what has always been my position is that whenever mm. injustice is carried out against anybody, whether he's seen in the good books of the public or not, you know, whether he's a murderer or a killer. As long as injustice is carried out against the person, what is most important is justice first yeah. before you deliver justice to the person. Yeah. So because otherwise everybody will be blind now. So society. what took me to Abiola was an moment of June twelfth election. Okay. It's not because it was any special character okay. that yeah, yeah, yeah. I was proud of. Yeah. You said you said you don't fear death, but what's I mean there must be something you're a human being as well. I, I hate flying. You. you know you hate flying. Yes. <laughs> you might be flying like I mean, you don't we must have done many miles. Exactly. Flying. Really? Yeah, yeah. I I believe there's one scientist who has told me that fear yeah. must find a place yes, in life yeah, of it. So of course, if you are yeah. not afraid of police, you're not afraid of death. Yeah. There'll be something of and course, the reason yeah. why I hate flying is because I just hate not to be in control of my destiny. <laughs> I don't trust the pilot. Exactly, I don't yeah. trust <laughs> like the plane yeah. could be going down and they will be advising <laughs> you until it crashes. <laughs> So, so uh, I'm always like, if yeah, I could yeah. sit with a pilot, I'll be fine yeah, with yeah. flying. Because then, if yeah. he's not doing the right thing, if he falls asleep, I can slap him in. So. <laughs> well, now with a pilot, I don't know. But yeah, well, you know, you've gone through a lot. I mean, uh, someone like me, I love reading. I know lo lots of people love reading as well. You, do you intend to write a book? If I'm alive, yes, I will. No, you're, you're really alive. You should start working on something. Uh, yeah, you're 51 you know, already, so you have a lot to for write people on like us, you never know. But yeah. if, if, if I were to, like, I have like number of periods in my life that will make an interesting reading. No, there's so many, not just number of periods. All your life has been interesting. Yeah. So I mean, so I think you should. I'm owing yeah. the world like about four different books. You should, honestly. Several volumes. Yeah, you should. But that would also mean that, and I, I think this is one thing Wale Shoyenka told me, mm. is like, if you are still here, there are certain stories that are difficult to write. So, yeah. but you know, there, there will be books that will write based on my experience and I think yeah. it then opens up what else to write about my No, life. yeah, but I think I think now is a good time because I, I think, I mean, you're a figure, you're such an inspirational figure to many people that, you know, that you should be documenting. I mean, like now, there's, there's a camp, you should have someone like following you around documenting your activities and because a, a book from you telling your story for the past thirty years, will be will be something well, else. You there's know, no to, book that can contain my story for the past thirty years. At it least has to be like volumes. Segmented. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. I understand yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's in the works. I, yeah. I, you know, I've thought about the book. Yeah. I mean, several books. Yeah. And I've thought about uh, movies. Exactly. You know, I've exactly. actually yeah. had someone approach me to do a documentary. Okay. Uh, B. Mandele. 
Okay. He, he died recently. Wow. Just suddenly, it's very sad. No, you should honestly because the unborn generation needs to listen to you. Final question: When is all when is all said and done? How do you want to be remembered? This one question I don't care about. <laughs> <laughs> Reason is that I won't be here to be arguing with yeah, anybody. Yeah. yeah so yeah. there is no Twitter or Facebook or yeah, Instagram yeah. or movies in the grave. Yeah, yeah. You know, once I'm done, it takes three days. You know, I will become matter. Part of me will be liquid, part will be gas, and my bones will be solid. You know, and I'm fine with that. I don't have to worry about how I'm going to remember what they will write as an epitaph because I'm not going to be the carpenter or the architect designing my grave. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave that to those who are alive. You know, but yeah. if there's if there's a if there's life after death. You know, I'll be troubling all the oppressors. Like, <laughs> you know, the next life. Yeah, I'll I'll be a pest against dictators, uh, fascists, yeah, and thieves. Yeah, even no, after afterlife, you know. Yeah, no, Mr. Sowore, I really appreciate this. You, yeah. you are, like I said, I I hold you in high regard. You know, you've. I told you personally that I think I should say it again on air that before I think twenty fifteen, not I think twenty fifteen, when I was SUG president. Sarah reporters helped push my story out to the world. Wow. I remember that phone call. You I, told me today. I, yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah, and I, I was telling you about macaroni. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> How like uh, he was expelled and yeah. uh, we took yeah. on it. Yeah. You know, but you see, this is why it's important that yeah. you know we do what is right. I never knew I in any way I had an impact on your life in you know, a personal big way. Big impact, yeah. personally, yes. So, and I'm glad that uh, I was able to yeah. do that. No, it's not even you. It's not even you. It's like your, the, the organization you built, which obviously represented your. Not yeah. the, the, it still represents your ideas, and it was just a phone call. It was an American number, a phone yeah, call. Yeah. The next day, the VC was on his heels, and that yeah. that interview alone, that being on Sahara reporters, many phone calls were coming in. I could sense the shifts from his position after that yeah, day. Yeah. Yes, I ended up getting an and everything, but you know, I, I kind of felt since and that, since he that was day, regret that he expelled <laughs> you because you have become a better person Do than he probably is today. Of course, yeah. yeah. That's since that I'm like, I hold this guy is somebody that I always relate with, that I, that I respect and love. And thank you for doing this. Thank you for bringing out the time. Thank you so much. I never much. knew you were gonna even the way you responded to the message, like instantly. You know. Yeah, it's, it's but that's the way leadership should be. No, it is. It must it be is. responsive. It is yes. And compassionate yeah no thank you so much sir, for doing this i'm so grateful thank you so, thank much, you so much for bringing me thank you